Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the United States Transhumanist Party Virtual Enlightenment Salon of August 9th, 2020. I am pleased today to be joined by a panel of esteemed US Transhumanist Party officers, including our Director of Applied Innovation, David Shoemaker, our Secretary, Pavel Illin, our Director of Visual Arts, Art Ramon Garcia, our 2020 US Presidential Candidate and Director of Marketing, Charlie Cam, and our Director of Energy Issues, John Carrots. And with us today, we have two special guests representing the uh, French Transhumanist Association, the AFT Techno Prague. We have Marc Roux and we have Jean-Brice Allemand to talk to us about the reception of transhumanism in France, as well as the work of AFT Techno Prague in advancing transhumanist ideas and pursuing various international collaborations. So welcome, Marc. Uh, welcome, Jean. Let us begin. Uh, Marc, you have a presentation that you would like to deliver. We are all quite interested to see it. Thank you very much, uh, Genady. I'm very pleased uh, with uh, this uh, invitation. It's a, it's a first, I think, that we have the occasion to speak about uh, the, the French Association uh, front of uh, uh, so broad uh, um, uh, audience. Uh, so uh, I will try to give you some uh, ideas of uh, how things uh, happen uh, in France uh, uh, since uh, something like uh, 10, 10 or 15 years. Uh, just I have to switch uh, to show the, the slides I, I have prepared. Uh, so just uh, a little while here. And uh, so I think that you will be able to see it. Uh, no. Here. Here we are. So, um, first of all, I will talk to you about um, the the peculiarity of the French context. Um, France, <laughs> I think, it's a country of contradiction. Um, it's still a world pole in terms of biotechnologies, I think. Uh, you can think about, uh, uh, for example, this uh, Karmat Artificial Heart or Emmanuel Charpentier, you know, uh, the role she played uh, in the development of uh, CRISPR-Cas9. And, and at the same time, it's a pole of strong bioconservatism. Um, one example, uh, since 2004, France uh, recognized a crime against human species. It's the only country, I think, in the world to do so. And if you practice or promote reproductive cloning or eugenics, they don't expect uh, what is uh, eugenics, but there is something called eugenics in the law, you face 30 years of imprisonment. In general, the, the vast majority of the, of the media and the various commentators, sociologists, uh, philosophers, uh, etc., have done a, a long and often caricatural presentation of transhumanism. Um, well, anyway, uh, it's always, um, it's have done with, um, um, a transhumanism will be, will be exclusively the, the emanation of big capital, be libertarian and scientific, uh, especially from the Silicon Valley, sure. And it will promise us a two-tier society where the, the super rich will monopolize enhancement technologies and uh, impose the worst of dictatorships on the rest of the world. And I passed on the many critics who condemn transhumanism for bioethical, moral, or religious uh, reasons, uh, etc. And that's why we feel that we, we need, we feel the need to repeat tirelessly that there is not one, only one transhumanism. There is, there are several uh, transhumanism, um, and not only this uh, caricature uh, that's. Um, uh, that they are presenting to, to us. 
Um, well, in France, we even have groups who not only uh, openly claim to be uh, bioconservatives, but bioludists, and who doesn't hesitate to use not only propaganda, but intimidation or even aggression to try to prevent any debate. For example, you have this association which is called Pièce et Anyone? Anyway, uh, they wrote these books. Uh, and you see they, use, they, they are using this uh, sentence from uh, Kevin Warwick about the chimpanzee of the future. I don't know if you remember uh, this, uh, this sentence. Uh, anyway, um, these groups um, is uh, able to go to, the, uh, they, they, they uh, was able to, um, to um, uh, sorry, uh, to um, uh, make us, uh, to avoid our participation uh, to several um, colloquium, for example, uh, by putting pressure on the organizer. And so they cancel our, our, inter our interventions by two times, or um, by the, uh, the, the, the ideology, um, they influence other peoples who uh, don't hesitate to put on fire Fab Lab, for example. Uh, to, uh, so so you, you can't see uh, until where they are able to, to go. Now, uh, uh, if I may, uh, we, for some reason, still do not see your slides, but I think the visuals here are helpful. Uh, so there may be some option that you can toggle uh, so that we can see the uh, visuals representing uh, these hostile groups that you described. Uh, if, if I go back like that, do you see the previous slide? No, I think uh, you need to enable the share screen function on your end. Oh, I lost it. Yes. Mm. Okay. What about now? No, unfortunately, we still do not see it. One option could be, uh, Pavel, if you have the slides, we could give Pavel the host role and he could share them on oh, his end. Now? Oh, yes. Now we see your oh, slides. You, so, you didn't have it from the beginning. <laughs> uh, we did not, but when it got to the visuals, I think it became important for us to be able to no. <laughs> see. Yes, yes. So these are uh, representations of some of the hostility that transhumanism has faced in France. Exactly. And you can see on the right, for example, a poster uh, which was uh, on the streets of uh, Paris uh, some years ago. Um, um, yes, uh, stop transhumanism and we are other such uh, examples. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm starting again, sorry for that. Um, yeah, um, the consequence is that it remains very difficult for officials, uh, scientists, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, politicians or other uh, to openly present themselves as transhumanists. And uh, Conversely, uh, researchers who fear, who fear to see their work morally condemned use the word transhumanism as um, a scapegoat. You know, uh, transhumanists are the bad guys, not us. Right? We are just uh, doing science, even if they are doing exactly the, the same things. Well, yet for four or five years, hmm, the, the lines are slightly moving. More and more institutions are calling on us, university, public hospital, the National Society of Medical Ethics, uh, Union of Entrepreneurs, uh, etc. Uh, we were even auditioned and then invited by the French Soci Socialist uh, Party. And uh, not only, but uh, invited once at the National Assembly by a think tank to make our concrete uh, proposals. Um, we, I can say that some well-known scientists accept to work closely with us, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know if you know, oh, not this one, this one, <laughs> uh, Miroslav Radman, it's a quite well-known um, international biologist, or uh, Jean-Marc Lemaitre, uh, it's um, another um, biologist uh, which uh, works uh, on uh, 
um, a SEM cell and re reclaiming a SEM cells. Um, so a few politicians have appeared to be uh, open-minded uh, to some transhumanistic ideas. I told you about the, the Socialist Party, for example, Corinne Narasiga was the um, spokesperson of the, uh, the, the Socialist Party uh, two or three um, years ago, and now she's the number two on the, the Socialist Party in, in France. And uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, it's a uh, representative of the, the, the far left, if you, if you want, uh, but uh, it happens to um, I have a citation uh, uh, which was uh, for us, clearly transhumanists, uh, calling uh, the, the idea that, uh, you see, um, um, we can uh, overcome death, for example. And this in the, the public debate on the TV uh, for the, the pre previous uh, pre pre presidential uh, um, election. So it was cl quite clear position. Um, in... In 2018, we were auditioned by the French National Ethics Committees as part of the revision of the, the bioethics laws. And uh, for us, it was maybe much more important than this um, previous example uh, I give, because the, uh, this committee in France, it's really, really often followed by the politicians uh, after that, after they, they give their advices. And last year, uh, well, 2019 was a good idea. Uh, it was particularly good uh, on this front in general with invitation from the Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Health, and uh, hearing before a, a UNESCO commission uh, uh, in, uh, in Paris. Uh, so you see that things are moving. And in, in addition, I can say that uh, further social, sociological studies show that the, the French population uh, as a whole, maybe it's in favor of the use, at least of the use of medicine in order to improve the condition of healthy people and not only ill people. Uh, I can show you this, this graph, which uh, was uh, from uh, um, uh, uh, an increase, uh, uh, it was in 2016, and uh, when the question is directly uh, uh, asked to the people, you see this uh, is about the question about the use of medicine, um, uh, even for healthy people. And uh, the, the blue also bone shows uh, 72. It's uh, uh, they think that it's a good thing to use um, uh, medicine uh, for enhancements. Uh, so the 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 image is very different when you you just uh, um, read the newspaper and uh, ask directly to the, to the people uh, uh, in France. Um, and uh, other uh, studies show that especially urban youth, educated people and well-off, mostly uh, will be in favor of uh, transhumanism. And that uh, the opposition, it's on the other part, so more older per persons uh, in the countryside, uh, et, et cetera. Um, we love that. Um, I have to say that for the while, um, we meet a persistent refusal by the major and the big media. For example, uh, even we, if we had uh, now uh, dozens and dozens of uh, papers on uh, different uh, newspapers, uh, radio, etc., we never reach to have any paper in uh, one of the three uh, most important uh, uh, newspaper in France, you know, uh, Le Monde, uh, for example, Le Figaro, uh, et cetera. Um, they never open their, their columns or invite us uh, to their platform. And the same is right for, for the, the TV uh, broadcast uh, uh, channel. And I have to say that we continue to, to, to meet a mistrust on the academic uh, community uh, as a whole. Um, and the same for the, the entrepreneurs, uh, they alternate between interest, skepticism, and cautiousness. Um, it's very difficult to, 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 uh, um, to be clear. So the, we believe that, okay, while we we'll still have a long way to go, but the, the underlying trends seems to be favorable. That's the first uh, uh, images are, um, I wanted to, to give you. Um, now, 
I want to, to talk about uh, some sociological particularities. I think that uh, we can explain this uh, specific uh, context uh, paying attention to different factors. For example, uh, in France, if we, you, you compare with um, 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 uh, British Island or uh, America, there is still a kind of mistrust of uh, new technologies. Um, it's not um, so, so clear, but I think that it's a result of a, a world uh, history. Um, and then there is the, I don't um, be in, I, I don't go in the details because uh, it will be too long. Eh? Uh, but uh, um, it's just a first idea. So the second idea is the fact that transhumanist thought um, it had first developed in the Anglo-Saxon world. Not uh, uh, only did the, the the French have little access, to them, it's because the, the there is the language barrier, but uh, more of a, um, there is this uh, this suspicion. <laughs> um, it, maybe it's um, they, they look like the, the the last avatar of uh, American intellectual uh, domination. You know they fear, and uh, you have to to have this in mind to understand uh, some of the the position you, you can uh, encounter in, in France. And then you have some uh, really problems with uh, very problems of vocal vocabulary. Uh, I, I saw that um, um, the, the, the term transhumanism, post-humanism, the word enhancements, when uh, the French meet the, those words, they, they try to and to make some translation, or worst, they try to understand it um, with um, etymology. But um, I think that uh, if we, we look what, uh, I don't know, Max uh, Moore or uh, uh, Nick Bostrom uh, uh, was um, writing when, when they were talking about um, um, posthumanism, for example, this is not uh, necessarily a post in a Latin uh, meaning after humanism. It's um, something uh, which could be a continuity. It's a discussion. Uh, some French, a lot of French commentators just took the words, make a straight translation and have their own uh, explanation, their own uh, interpretation uh, just uh, from this uh, straight uh, translation. translation. Uh, the same for the words uh, enhancement, uh, enhancement. So you can't have a, a, a clear translation in, in French. You have to choose, and so it could be uh, augmentation. But so you're you're putting the focus on the quantitative meaning. Otherwise, uh, you will uh, choose something like uh, amélioration uh, uh, in French, improvement, and uh, you put the focus on the subjective connotation. But you have not the uh, the wall uh, meaning of uh, enhancement, and uh, we we have uh, the, those kind of uh, of difficulties, and we as as transhumanists are obliged to to try to explain uh, very often uh, those kind of little uh, uh, problems. And then uh, you have the the problem of the difference in sensitivity. I would say to um, spirit spirituality or even metaphysical discourses. Probably because France is a country that has been largely secularized. For example, you can use the term immortality in France uh, so easily um, because the, you will have the, the accusation that uh, uh, you are falling in a metaphysical discourse or a religious discourse, and it will be a, a condemnation for, for a lot of, uh, of French. So uh, we were uh, obliged to um, use uh, other words or to other expression to talk about uh, biological immortality or uh, to use the word amortality. Uh, amortality, uh, it's a, a word uh, coined, I think, by uh, the, society, the French sociologist Edgar Morin, and uh, it means uh, uh, just uh, uh, winning the, the battle against uh, aging and uh, illness. Uh, but uh, it's not a world, a world um, immortality. 
so it's another kind of, uh, of difficulty. And uh, then we, we have to put attention uh, uh, from the, the outset the, the, to the, the, the to health issues, the environmental issues, and above all, social issues. And uh, which is, is why AFT Technoprog quickly recognized itself in the thinking, I have to say, it, of uh, uh, James Hughes, as he expressed it in his book, A Citizen Cyborg, and all the ideas of techno-progressivism. And that's the reason why uh, the little name of uh, AFT is Technoprog. Um, so, with that, uh, I, now I will end uh, with uh, some details about uh, the, the association. Um, before the, the 2000s, there was almost nothing transhumanistic in the French-speaking world, I, I, I think. Uh, from 2002 to 2007, uh, we had the small, small groups, Les Mutants, uh, but uh, it's all... Uh, it was a uh, uh, groupuscular, uh, and, and uh, we have some books uh, I, I like to, to, to quote. Uh, Rémi Sussan, Les, 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 les Utopies Post-Humaines, was the, the, one of the books uh, for myself, which, uh, uh, which one uh, I encountered the main ideas of, of uh, transhumanism. It's, uh, for the French people, it's a really good introduction of the, 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 the world uh, ideas, uh, I think. Um, from 2007 appears uh, the French Transhumanist Association, Tango Prague. Uh, it um, established itself as the, the organization of reference in France. I, I have the pleasure to say, <laughs> because, uh, okay, uh, it's there from uh, more than 10 years uh, now. Um, but uh, we are also in uh, uh, other French-speaking countries. Uh, uh, we are present in, in Belgium, in Switzerland, and uh, some of uh, uh, African uh, uh, French-speaking uh, countries like uh, Cameroon or Benin, uh, for example. Um, okay, the association was declared in 2010, but it's a detail. Uh, uh, from its creation, um, it's um, important, I think, that, uh, to, to say that um, um, from 2014, its activity uh, had started to, um, to grow. All the indicators grow uh, steadily from 2014. Uh, 2014, it was the year where uh, we were able to organize for the first time um, the, the Transvision uh, Colloquium. Um, but uh, from this time, um, Okay, the, our numbers, the different numbers draw uh, like, like that. It was good until the 2017. And from um, uh, 2000, 2017, we are stay at this level. That means that we are still about a uh, hundred number. When I see, uh, say a hundred members, I want to say a uh, hundred numbers. We are permanently up to date with their membership uh, fees. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the organization see that uh, it's about uh, 2,000 um, uh, sympathizers, uh, and this is stable now from uh, from three four years. Um, so, with all this, uh, um, I'd say that uh, this movement, uh, this energy, we was able to organize. Uh, Transvision 2014, I have to say that for us, it was very important. It changed something. We have the, the pleasure to have, uh, for the first time, a lot of, uh, of journalists, something like uh, 40 journalists uh, had come. Uh, we had uh, four, five, five uh, crew films uh, with this uh, occasion and a lot of uh, papers, etc. Um, so I still think that's the... The organization of such a colloquium, I say that well, I, it's already a part of the of the part of Jean. Maybe that it's a really good thing for uh, a country uh, that uh, who wants to who try to um, um, to help the the transhumanist movement. Uh, I think in in his country. Um, 
Well, uh, I have to say that uh, we have now some groups in, in different uh, uh, regions of, uh, of France. Uh, sorry, uh, here we are. Uh, so and now it's much more than this map. Uh, we have uh, uh, correspondent in uh, about uh, 10 big, big countries, big uh, towns uh, in France. Uh, so uh, it's not so, so bad. And uh, uh, yes, the previous slide is, was just to say that uh, we have uh, uh, several books um, uh, from members of the association. Um, so uh, this is a, a good help uh, uh, for the, the, the world communication. Um, so, well, we are continuing our many activities now. In 2010, uh, we have made uh, an important uh, decision. Um, we, we, our, our general assembly decided to try to steer our action in more practical directions. Um, because uh, since the beginning, uh, I have to say that uh, AFT Technoprog, well, uh, it was and it still it's remained um, mainly uh, uh, in the theoretical field. And we believe uh, that um, in order to, to reach a wider audience, we need to, to be more practical. And so, uh, for example, in the, the coming month, uh, we plan to be partner of an implant uh, party to reinforce our contacts with uh, the, the makers, with the fab labs. And uh, we, have, we, we plan to, to develop uh, our own initiative as makers. That's a... Uh, uh, I hope uh, an important uh, direction for the, the coming years. And finally, and uh, <laughs> you may be interested by this part, more and more pressing voices were heard within our association to get down to politics. Several members have been working for a few months uh, to launch a transhumanist political party in France. Uh, with the aim of uh, presenting a candidate from the, for the French presidential election, uh, which will be the next one, will be in uh, 2022, uh, so in two years. Uh, so we will see that. Uh, I can, I'm not so certain um, uh, about nothing. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the group is already working uh, for uh, now. Uh, Two or three months. Uh, so uh, okay, I hope that you will you will have some some news about uh, about this project. And now, um, well, um, perhaps um, I don't know. Can say that uh, our association has reached um, something like a necessary size and maybe maturity to better contribute to the development of international transhumanism. I don't know. Um, we will discuss about that. And uh, one sign for me is that uh, this year, and for the, the first time, we are fortunate to have two special delegates for our international relations in the person of Leonid, uh, sadly it's not here uh, tonight, uh, and uh, Jean. Uh, so I will let the, the words maybe uh, to Jean, uh, or I don't know if you want to ask uh, first of all a question about uh, uh, the presentation uh, I just uh, made. And so with that, uh, I will uh, avoid the, the share of the, the screen. And I think that is done. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you, Mark, for your presentation. I think we should uh, provide a brief window of time for questions and comments regarding your presentation and then we'll move on to Jean. Uh, what was interesting for me was to observe some of the uh, differences in the societal environment that transhumanism faces in France versus the United States. Uh, what was interesting about your remarks is that it seems many French people have this instantaneous grasp of the etymology of the term transhumanism. And they're able to reason from the etymology to come up with a certain impression. That impression may not necessarily be accurate 
because they haven't read the foundational texts of transhumanism. They're not familiar with the explicit expressions of the philosophy, but at least that etymological knowledge gets them into the conversation. In the United States, what we face is essentially an unawareness uh, on the part of large segments of the public. On the other hand, the kind of very organized hostility that you mentioned also barely exists in the United States. Our major problem is not uh, intense public hostility toward transhumanism. We have a few conspiracy theorist circles, uh, people like Alex Jones, whom uh, ordinary reasonable people do not take seriously. Uh, but those ordinary reasonable people generally will be mildly curious if they're informed about what transhumanism is, uh, but they won't identify it right away without a detailed explanation. So it's more of a, a blank slate uh, in terms of their cognition of the term. And yet, uh, when one speaks to them, uh, many of them, not all, but many do get excited about the promise of emerging technologies. So uh, our task has been to very gradually broaden this awareness. Now, there are some similarities too, in the sense that you mentioned among the French public, it seems that a majority, about 60%, are mildly uh, positively oriented toward transhumanism. Uh, and I would estimate uh, that is the case in the United States as well. And I think those people would take advantage of the technologies advocated by transhumanists if those technologies became available and affordable to the general public. Now, uh, in terms of media and mainstream politicians, you seem to have an easier time with certain politicians uh, actually explicitly embracing transhumanist ideas. This is very difficult in the United States because of the two party system that we have. The Republicans and Democrats generally don't even want to acknowledge the existence of other political parties. So that is our biggest obstacle. And in terms of media coverage, uh, it depends on whether the media outlets uh, are aligned with the main political parties. If the media outlets believe it's their mission to promote either the left wing or the right wing of American politics, the Republican party on the right wing, the Democratic party on the left wing, then they will just stop covering anything about alternative viewpoints. We had an 18 candidate presidential debate uh, for representatives of eight minor political parties in Chicago on March 4th. And it got some coverage in alternative media. It was live streamed on the internet, but we did not have any mainstream media coverage for the debate uh, because they don't like to give people any awareness that alternatives exist. So in France, uh, you mentioned there is an incipient effort to begin a political party. My hope is you will have more sympathy among uh, representatives of other political parties who see an alignment of goals and see the possibility of making certain alliances, at least for uh, pragmatic reasons. So those are my observations. And if you have any thoughts in response, I'd be happy to hear them. Uh yeah, ju just uh, uh, to say, for example, that uh, we have some, we, we get in touch of, with the, the Pirates Party. Uh, we know that uh, this is a, a possibility uh, there, uh, are some acquaintance. And um, um, yes, we know some peoples in different parties, we are uh, enough uh, open-minded. Um, for example, I was talking uh, about the, the, the fact that uh, actually uh, we, it was it was uh, two years ago uh, the, the National Assembly voted for uh, the new uh, bioethics uh, law. Uh, well, the the main reporter uh, of the law was a member of the actual uh, presidential uh, party in France, uh, Deputy uh, Jean-Louis Touraine, and uh, it, 
we can, you can talk, talk, talk about, about him as something like a, a crypto transhumanism. <laughs> it's a, a very, very impressioning how far he's able to, uh, to go, but uh, without uh, nothing, uh, saying nothing uh, really, really openly. Uh, but we, we know that we have uh, this, uh, this door, this, those back doors. And uh, other peoples, even in the government, uh, for example, one of the previous, uh, um, how to say that, uh, state uh, secretary um, was uh, uh, the, 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 the the companion uh, of uh, uh, guys, uh, which as uh, we it still have a, a web blog and uh, an organization which it's starting. In Boston, I mean, he was in Harvard when they start together with and uh, her, his friend uh, this uh, this organization, and now uh, uh, this uh, person uh, was uh, uh, in the in the French government. Uh, so uh, we have these uh, opportunities. But uh, on the other hand, the fact is that for the while uh, we we didn't appear as uh, nothing political anything political so uh, i think we think that uh, they 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 don't uh, feel us as any danger but uh, we think that uh, the the fact to try to enter in politics um, it will have this big risk uh, that's uh, from a day to, uh, to the other day uh, those people uh, can uh, uh, start to see us as uh, competitors and so uh, this is the, the, the question. <laughs> Maybe the, the things will change in the bad direc direction. And that is an interesting question to consider. Uh, one thought that I've had along these lines is that in parliamentary systems, uh, it's easier to form multi-party alliances. So some more established parties may consider minor political parties to be useful allies in the type of system that exists in the United States, which is essentially a plurality or first past the post system, each of the parties sees the others as competitors and even say the Green Party is seen as a serious competitor by the Democratic Party, even though the Green Party espouses a lot of the same ideas and indeed goes further than the Democratic Party does. The Democratic Party has often fought to exclude the Green Party from the ballots because they don't want to, quote, split the vote. Uh, but I wonder, what is your assessment in France with regard to how conducive the French political system is to collaboration among multiple political parties? Well, that, uh, you're right. It's easier. Uh, it's easier in, in the, this direction. But but you have to take care in which election you take part because the the logics are very different. If uh, you you try to participate to local elections or to national election or to European uh, elections, uh, each election have a, has a different uh, uh, logics. Uh, so, for example, uh, I think it's it's uh, it won't be a good idea to try uh, to 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 take part uh, on a local election. Uh, we have nothing to say at, uh, at the level, of, so so little to say at the level of uh, of uh, a village or a little town. Uh, I think that it's possible to try at the national election for the presidential election because. It's quite open, and you are not obliged uh, to have a uh, to have a lot of uh, a candidate. You have just to have one candidate, or uh, on the the other side, the other possibility is to try with the the European election. As you know, uh, in uh, in Great Britain, in Spain, in, in Germany, uh, last year several uh, candidates uh, uh, tried the uh, the chance. Um, so um, okay, uh, we 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 wasn't uh, uh, ready uh, for the the previous um, um, European elections, and so that's the reason why uh, we we think that the the next uh, possibility will be two thousand and twenty two. Uh, but uh, I want to add uh, uh, another idea, which was and it's still uh, in discussion uh, inside the, the association and inside the, the, the group who to try to organize the, the, the political uh, investment. 
Um, in France, you, th there is a, um, a, a difference between uh, organize, uh, to be organized as a party, which is a really uh, specific kind of organization, and to be organized at what at they say a movement. Uh, it's uh, also uh, an organization, a, a non-profit uh, organization, uh, but if you appear like a movement uh, at the first step, you don't appear with candidates. And so you can wait even until the last time to declare uh, a candidate or very late to declare a candidate or to declare that you will support a candidate. Uh, in, on, in, on the other hand, if you, if you start immediately like a party, it's quite clear that you will try to, you will have candidates, you, you will try to warn some, uh, some, some, to win some election. Uh, so we are not absolutely sure for a while if we will choose the, the party form of the, or the movement uh, form. No, no, between us, uh, uh, um, everybody is not, uh, uh, no, don't agree uh, or in one or the other um, uh, possibility. Um, I think that's a uh, movement. It's uh, it's more easy. It's uh, less dangerous. Uh, but sure, in terms of uh, communication, uh, it can be less attractive for the media, for example. Uh, so we have to to choose. We have to to, to think about it very well <laughs> and make a choice uh, at the moment. Yes, and it's good that French law allows that flexibility and an organization can be a movement up to the point uh, when it feels ready to field its own candidates. Uh, that is quite a nice system in my view. Uh, but I do recognize your point regarding media attention. Indeed, I would say the main reason why Zoltan Istvan founded the US Transhumanist Party was to garner that kind of media attention because in the United States, a lot of people pay attention to politics and even an unconventional political party that doesn't have a large probability of winning an election can still get a lot of coverage if its proposals are intriguing enough or different enough that uh, some media outlets see it as uh, essentially newsworthy. And that is what Zoltan was able to do. And we find the political party format allows us to get that consistent exposure. We're still getting interviews on a regular basis. We're getting articles published about us. And internally, uh, we operate uh, very much like an intellectual organization. Uh, we just have this outward facing uh, political front, so to speak, that we use to spread awareness of transhumanist ideas and policies. And really, we hope that politicians from other parties will pick up our suggestions and also help implement them. We're not against any of the American political parties, even if some of them uh, believe they should be against us. Uh, we're actually quite willing to collaborate with anyone who advances our objectives. So now uh, let's see if uh, others on our panel have any questions for Mark or comments about Mark's presentation? Let's see. Uh, Art Ramon. Yes, uh, France has always led the world in fashion. Has there been any attempt to get with you know these fashion designers and, and trying to promote some transhumanism culture into fashion? Uh, I, I'm afraid that uh, th there are um, a really few artists or designers uh, uh, that are clearly linked with the directly with uh, transhumanist uh, uh, ideas. So that there are some, but the the ones um, are, which are involved are not at all uh, uh, from the the, the most uh, the, the well knowns. Um, so you you almost can hear at all uh, uh, in the media uh, about uh, what they are doing or you have to to be interested in a very uh, or quite a geek manifestation or events uh, to, to to find them we, we try to to promote them uh, as we can um, but there is still this uh, difficulty for them that uh, uh, some of them or all of them i don't know uh, knows that um, 
if they clearly appear like transhumanists, they will uh, have to um, uh, um, face all this uh, caricature I was uh, talking about uh, at the beginning. Uh, so uh, some of them or a lot of them uh, can try to say the, something, the same things just uh, within using the, you know, the T words. And uh, we, uh, for us, uh, the, the problem is it's not publicity. It's not publicity at all. So it's the worst publicity. They don't talk about the uh, association. They don't talk about uh, transhumanism. So uh, they, they speak about transhumanism with, the, with their work, but uh, it's not exactly the, the same things. And so uh, about designers, for example, well, oh, I don't know, but I, I don't see anyone. Well, things can be said visually, and sometimes that, that could be a way around difficult words. So just something to consider. Uh, I think about one one person uh, which made uh, a really good work uh, is uh, uh, Thierry Mutin. Thierry Mutin is a designer and is an artist. Well, he works almost all his career in America. <laughs> he he, he designs uh, beautiful uh, buildings or um, uh, atrium uh, at the entrance of uh, um, um, buildings in New York, in, in, uh, 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 where we was in Houston, I mean, uh, and in his works, uh, uh, he used a, a great lot of uh, uh, transhumanistic ideas. And now it, it, he retreats, he came back in, in France, and uh, from uh, two or three years, he, he tries to, to, uh, to, 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 to show in, in France what he was doing in, in, in America with uh, so much success. But uh, I, uh, sadly, I, I for the while, uh, and even I know that he was trying hard with two or three projects, uh, I, I don't see any results. So it showed that even for some people with, with, with a, a big career, with a name, it's still difficult. And Mark, for the benefit of our audience, how do you spell his name? Mutin, M U T I N, and uh, M U T I N, Mutin, M U M U T I N, and uh, the Mutin. first name is T H I E R R Y, correct? T I T H, yes, T H I E R R Y, Thierry. All right, uh, and I have posted his Perhaps. name in the chat as well. Uh, so thank you for mentioning him. Uh, that uh, will definitely be of interest to uh, those who wish to find out more about transhumanist inspired design at yeah. the very least. Now, do we have any other questions or comments from the panel for Mark? Pavel. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, in US, the, the situation with the trans perception of the transhumanism is a bit different. Uh, US people, lots of people fully support transhumanist ideas but uh, they're afraid to express it in public uh, because they could face possible uh, consequences or even persecution. People are afraid to lose their jobs, their businesses, their investors, and so on. Even uh, famous people like uh, I don't know, Andrew Yang or Elon Musk, they even, I think they're, uh, they are transhumanist, but they, even if they're working on uh, some technologies such as AI, or uh, they advocating for things like a basic income, uh, they still avoid uh, the term transhumanist because of, I think, because of the self-censorship, because they are afraid of the, like, expressing some non-conventional terms. Um, yeah, and that's very sad. And besides uh, toxicity of the outside world, uh, transhumanists, transhumanists are famous for inner conflicts, which usually uh, hurt the community as a whole. And Mark, uh, how the French and maybe broader European transhumanist community looks like, and how do you think we could uh, uh, not necessarily avoid the conflicts, but to channelize this energy people have in more constructive way? Mm. So it's uh, two different points uh, for for me, and the first point it's very important. I will have a 
myself a question about the the the, the first points, but I, I have to answer the the. I want to answer the second one: how to avoid uh, uh, divisions in general, uh, even inside the 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 movements. Yes, it's a big question, and it's a. Uh, uh, an important question for us uh, from the from the beginning, um, but so uh, well for this part so maybe the the cultural uh, French uh, context has uh, had uh, helped us uh, a, a little bit, um, and but uh, um, yes I, I have an hesitation I think that it's still a little bit touchy. And uh, I can uh, I can feel it even when I'm speaking about uh, I'm speaking with some uh, American uh, representative of the movement. Um, well, I, I followed uh, different uh, um, uh, phases um, that the the U.S. Transhumanist Party passed uh, on the, the the past month. Uh, I know that uh, things wasn't uh, easy at all. Um, uh, so, how to to say that? Well, um, I will say that what I will say it's it's my own position first of all. Okay, um, okay. Uh, in uh, uh, at the first time, in the first time, sure that uh, we we can we can say that we uh, it's preferable uh, to. Um, uh, try to be um, consensual, and uh, uh, because we have so much to 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 just I made. Do you, can you hear me? Yes, uh, we could hear you. Okay, because I have the, the images was frozen, so I have a, a, an hesitation. <laughs> Sorry, tell me if there is a problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, that was for me, for example, the position of the first transhumanist historically. I, I think I don't know of, about uh, uh, Feridun as Vandarian, the idea of uh, to be uh, upwingers, uh, which was it's an idea that uh, Natasha is still, uh, uh, I think, uh, or as I understand, uh, very in favor of uh, and not trying to. Uh, um, Sorry, uh, to 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 choose a, a trend or, or, or another, uh, and I agree. And we we have tried to to follow, and we we are still uh, quite a, uh, we, we we pay attention to this uh, uh, problem uh, uh, until now. Uh, but um, on the other hand, for my part. And you know what? Uh, having in mind the example of the ecological parties in Europe, not only in France, I follow them in uh, Germany and Italy uh, from, from something like uh, 30, 30 years. And uh, I think it's uh, quite interesting to make the parallel uh, between uh, the history of ecological parties in Europe and uh, the, what could be uh, the evolution of uh, a transhumanist uh, a party. I think that's what we can uh, see, or maybe we can expect some uh, analogies uh, between the, the two, the both. Um, at the, the starting point, the, the ecological parties uh, was exactly uh, saying that uh, ecological, ecology is uh, a transversal, uh, you haven't to be a right or left uh, to be an uh, um, ecologist. And uh, ecologists uh, uh, are seeing, uh, think uh, uh, about all the, the society, uh, all, all the party can embrace, uh, artists, uh, etc. They, they enter in politics uh, about in, uh, at the end of the 70s uh, and the start of the, the, the 80s, uh, uh, depending on the, on the countries. Uh, okay, at the starting point, so there was exactly in our position now uh, the, what you was uh, saying about the, the position of the other parties or uh, the media, uh, ignorance, uh, etc. Um, at the time, they uh, start to reach a certain uh, level, which was something like two, three, and then uh, four or five percent. Uh, and so the other party uh, starts to, to pay attention. But uh, at the same time, Really quickly, uh, the deep political, traditional political divisions split them, and uh, it was uh, quickly impossible uh, to them to stay uh, unite 
as they was uh, thinking at the, the starting point. And uh, after their first uh, wins, uh, clearly at uh, uh, European elections uh, in 1994, uh, uh, no, 84, sorry, 84, um, uh, we, we, we saw a pair of different ecological uh, party. And uh, it was clear that uh, some was more lefty parties and other was more rightist parties. And so they, they fall in this, you can't say the same pitfall, or the, but maybe there is a, a logic here behind that. And, um, uh, well, uh, from my point of view, uh, I think that uh, as transhumanists, you have, we have uh, to, to, to keep this example in, in mind. And uh, I think that uh, uh, sooner or later, we will face uh, that kind of obligations. Um, well, in France, uh, as I was saying, the, the things was maybe a um, little more um, e easiest, easier uh, because the, the first group of the French uh, association, Technoprog, uh, really quickly dis discussing uh, between them, they agree in, okay, something but with, uh, from the beginning, some political ideas. Yeah, uh, I have a message that says on my connection, it's not very stable. I hope that you can hear me, still hear me. Uh, we heard you <laughs> with uh, just one interruption. So uh, if I understand the essence of your comment uh, early on, uh, the AFT uh, Technoprog met and they determined that they could agree on some essential ideas and use that as the basis for moving forward despite uh, any differences uh, along conventional political lines. Yeah, uh, you can read that and I, uh, I said it uh, in my speech that um, three words uh, appear as uh, our consensus, which was pay attention to health issues, environmental issues, and social issues, and the the, the last was the last one was uh, a really important one. Uh, so okay, it gave a, a kind of color to the association, but uh, it's still quite broad. And okay, if I want to be a little bit caricatural myself, I will say that the association. Uh, it goes from the from the center right until the far left, if you want, something like that, <laughs> and with uh, uh, yes, an average or something in the in the center left. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's it, uh, to answer to the question uh, the, to to Pavel, um, we we haven't all the 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 difficulties to to find a consensus because quite quickly there was this kind of uh, of consensus. But maybe I don't want to speak uh, too much, but uh, I don't want to forget uh, the question that, that uh, the, what, what was saying and uh, what Pavel was saying, uh, uh, remember me. Um, one of the important problems uh, in, in France is the, the difficulty to, to have connection with the business world and even the big business world. <laughs> and uh, Pavel, you also talking about the, the fact that uh, some, someone like uh, uh, Elon Musk, or I don't know, you, you can uh, talk about uh, Larry Page who has so, so transhumanistic uh, uh, point of view and public uh, uh, declarations uh, at some times uh, still uh, refuse to uh, speak about them as uh, transhumanist. But my question is, um, is it so difficult for you to have almost contacts, discussion with them, um, and to, to explain them uh, or to try to argue in front of them uh, why it could be so important uh, to, uh, to promote transhumanism or even uh, indirectly to help the transhumanist uh, movements? Uh, because I think that we have arguments uh, to try to convince them. What can you answer to me? Well, okay. thank you. Thank you for those insights. Uh, I think 
there is definitely a lot of uh, valuable observation here to consider. And it's true, we can discuss these ideas with individuals who don't explicitly identify as transhumanists, but may be willing to engage us in conversation. Uh, I think in those cases, it's just a matter of getting access to those individuals. Aubrey de Grey has lamented to me uh, before that uh, he sees, for instance, Mark Zuckerberg or Larry Page and Sergey Brin pursuing projects on life extension and curing all diseases in the 21st century. And yet, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they haven't uh, reached out to consult with uh, Aubrey de Grey. And Bill Andrews has had uh, similar concerns where sometimes he can get uh, a meeting or a conference call set up with an entrepreneur, but some of these people uh, who are multimillionaires or billionaires, they uh, are very set in their ways. Uh, there are certain ideas, uh, certain tactics that have led them to accumulate vast fortunes, and they tend to uh, therefore have a, a very high opinion of their initial hunches uh, about a particular subject. And so uh, if there's someone uh, who is more scientifically educated about an area, it may still be difficult for that expertise to reach the entrepreneur, the business person who could really help financially. And I think there's a similar uh, issue with the transhumanist party. It's almost like one has to have widespread recognition first to get that kind of notice uh, from these leading figures. But I think if we uh, kind of work our way around the edges, uh, have more communication with people in that general community, eventually uh, this kind of recognition may happen. But I do believe it will be a process that will take some years. Now, uh, your observations regarding the history of the uh, ecologically oriented parties in France is uh, quite interesting as well. And uh, it does seem like uh, once an organization grows to a certain point, uh, it almost begins to become a victim of its own success because some of the dynamics from the mainstream begin to take hold. The transhumanist party, uh, when it was founded by Zoltan, and since I became chairman in November 2016, has always strived to uh, undertake a big tent approach. We do have our three core ideals, which focus on significant life extension, on a culture of rationality and secular values, and on uh, preventing and mitigating existential risks. And we frame those core ideals specifically so that people from across the political spectrum could find some affinity with them and engage one another in policy discussions that transcend these trench warfare issues that occur between the right and the left. But at the same time, of course, we've had a great escalation of these right-left rivalries in American politics, but elsewhere in European politics as well over the past five years. And uh, it's difficult for that not to penetrate into uh, movements, even if those movements try explicitly to avoid that. And it's interesting because I've been in the position of essentially being the immune system of the organization and trying to defend it against uh, these kinds of hyper-partisan uh, infiltrations. In 2019, I had to uh, beat back uh, what I would largely characterize as a right-wing infiltration. And in late May, early June of this year, uh, I had to beat back a very virulently left-wing infiltration, while at the same time, uh, communicating to the members who happen to hold right-wing or left-wing positions that they're still welcome in our organization, that it's not about their politics in the mainstream sense that I would be concerned. It's only about behaviors. So if someone is attempting to purify or cleanse the organization of views that disagree with them. That to me is a very dangerous tendency because it gets rid of these opportunities 
for collaboration, for transcending partisan division, and for finding creative solutions. Uh, ultimately, my view, and I think many transhumanists will agree with me, is that the solutions are not found exclusively on the left or on the right, uh, or that the contemporary major political parties could solve the problems facing humanity. I think uh, we do need to uh, look upward uh, toward the potential of humankind through science, technology, rationality to uh, overcome these problems that have plagued the human condition historically. So my hope is the Transhumanist Party could remain a big tent organization, one that is welcoming uh, to people of many conventional political perspectives, as long as they accept that, that premise that this isn't going to be turned toward the right or turn toward the left, but remain transpartisan. So hopefully uh, in the coming years, that approach will bear itself out and persist. So yeah, uh, just a, a quick commentary about that, just to, to precise uh, what I was saying about the, how, the, how works the, the, the French uh, organization, uh, there is nothing uh, written in our uh, stages, uh, we said that uh, uh, we, we were also talking about uh, 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 how do you have to, do, to behave. Uh, it's just the fact that uh, because the um, uh, a, a clear majority of the first members and uh, the people who was mainly uh, involved uh, have the, 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 the tendency to uh, to put uh, in front of the, uh, some some ideas that you know uh, the other ones uh, all they were they, they agreed so they came in the organization and the fact is I just see that that's the the persons who um, express for example I can say uh, um, a clear libertarian uh, point of view uh, they they don't stay a lot. But that's it's just a choice. Uh, they they don't uh, probably they they don't feel on their ears with the the the, the majority of the association, and so um, well we it, it's just like that. Uh, we 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 don't uh, <laughs> try to to, uh, to to close any door. All the doors are open, but because the people we are, we which are already there. Are speaking clearly. There is a, a if I can't see naturally in a, in a kind of way, uh, a kind of filter, maybe. It, that's the fact. Interesting. So, so it's more of a cultural filter rather than a rules based filter. And it's interesting to consider. Uh, also, the characteristics uh, based on which one might want to have a filter. For me, it's essentially all about behavior. If somebody can be civil, if someone can engage with us constructively, then uh, they are welcome in our organization. So creating that culture uh, is indeed important. And I think we've made some strides in that with the people who are currently in our organization, our officers, our most active members, uh, I think we are on our way. So now I think it's a good time to have Jean give his presentation, and then we can continue the questions from the panel as well as the questions from the audience chat. So Jean, if you unmute, if you unmute yourself, feel free to proceed. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. We okay. Do. Sure. Uh, I work uh, in the AFT both for international relation and uh, in the political party. And um, I have planned to speak about the work we did uh, within AFT to address the challenges of uh, creating or not a party or a movement as said Mark. It's very interesting to, to talk with you because um, we probably we can find synergies between uh, you and uh, France. Even um, the landscape is very, very different because as you said, 
uh, in US, you have two parties. And in France, we have as many political parties as French people. That means we have something like 60 million of political parties in France. And it's the same as said Marc, it's the same uh, in IFT. We have a lot of uh, different feelings uh, with the politics. But uh, we are very lucky candidates or parties are very interesting to, to have a lot of uh, people voting for them. So it's the right time for AFT to, to develop some argument and to meet uh, uh, politicians uh, in order uh, to, to make the, the voice and the uh, thinkings of uh, transhumanism moving ahead. In addition to that, we will have in 2021 local election, I would say uh, uh, election for governors like in US. And it is another opportunity for us to talk with the candidates and to ensure that they understand pr properly the transhumanism. Because as said Mark, it's very clear that uh, uh, Contrary with US, in France, it's absolutely not well understood what is transhumanism. And uh, election is the right time to talk about it. You, you know, eh, French, we did revolution a few years after US, but we, we like politics. We like to talk. We like to debate. Uh, even we like to fight. So this uh, time is uh, very useful for us uh, to make our uh, ideas discuss uh, among the, uh, the country. As you know, as shown by Mark, uh, our association is very small, but it could uh, be a very good opportunity to increase the number of members because uh, there are a lot of uh, similarities between ecological party and uh, AFT or transhumanism movement at the beginning was, was or were very, very small. So even we are not so many, uh, if we make uh, this uh, comparison, we, we, we could have some opportunities to increase the number of uh, members of the AFT. And uh, it's the case because the numbers of our members are, is growing slowly, is growing slowly, but it's, it's growing. Second point of my uh, presentation, it's just very simple, you know, it's three slides and so it's okay. Uh, it's about the, the proposal we, we have split uh, the proposal we would like to address. Uh, we would like, we split it in uh, eight chapters and the rank of the chapters is very important. We start by education, after democracy, technology and science, health and longevity, environmental issues, economy, at last but not least, universal rights or, uh, yes, human rights, which are very important because probably all the artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence will have to cope with uh, the international human rights. Last point, among all these topics, and I speak under the control of Mark, uh, as we are go we have people from uh, right, center right to far left, we have not been able yet to, to finalize our position. 
and it's, it's the job we have till uh, next year in order to find a common route among all of us and to have a proposal which fit with all of us. That's it for me. If you have question, yes, I like you. <laughs> Thank you, Jean, uh, for your presentation. And now uh, let's open up the floor for questions. I know David and Charlie, you haven't uh, had the opportunity to ask questions yet. So uh, if either of you would like to start. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't, I, I think both presentations were very uh, enlightening and very interesting. I really enjoyed that. Um, I will like, I, I don't necessarily have questions, but I can speak to something with regard to um, some of the prominent people uh, or well-known people that are in uh, scientific uh, or, or organizations that appear to be transhumanists, but they don't necessarily come out and say they are. For example, as many of you know, I'm friends with Ray Kurzweil and Ray likes to stay out of politics. So he just, he's not about to necessarily become a member of anything like our party that's called the United States Transhumanist Party because it's a political organization. At the same time, um, he, the one of the reasons he doesn't necessarily come out and say that he's transhumanist either is because he's got his own title, which is singularitarian, um, which is almost the same thing anyway. I mean, if you read his books, that's why I'm uh, I call myself one a singularitarian, but I'm also a transhumanist. It overlaps. And to that point, um, I attended the uh, a post-human summit in New York last year, hosted by uh, uh, Fra Francesca Ferrando. And she's a she's a she's the uh, a, a, phil a philosophy professor at New York University, and she uh, is is one of the major proponents of uh, posthumanism. And in fact, I, I attended it there and, and so did uh, Denora Delphine. We were both there and, uh, the, and we all had dinner with her, with Ferran, uh, Fra Francesca and others. And we discussed about uh, transhumanism and post-human. Post and there was really no difference. I mean, really there isn't. I mean, I, I, mean, the, I almost saw no difference. The more we talked, the more we agreed. It was just like, uh, we, we just have different words. I, I know that was something that was, we discussed earlier or was discussed earlier in this conference um so i didn't I, I i mean i understand that there's different organizations as a as as was just mentioned that you've got millions of people with different uh, with a million different parties in france um there are a lot of people with different ideas here with different titles but they with regard to the transhumanist or post-human or singularitarian they're all kind of this very very similar it's it's it, there's this the, the distinctions and i think as we progress into the future there'll be almost no distinction because we're all trying to do the same thing now one more thing i'll mention with regard to politics um you mentioned about elon musk for example well one of his and again there's another guy who has never said he's anything um he uh, but he, one of his good friends is uh peter thiel now peter thiel uh, you know is one of the, he's in fact the biggest um investor personal uh, private investor in all of musk's companies they they are obviously friends from the paypal days and uh, they're you know he's a billionaire too and and peter thiel by all definition is a transhumanist because he's a member of uh alcor and he's uh and he wants to and all he talks about is life extension he's basically that's his only vision however he also and i don't know i don't know this personally so i can't say for sure but i know that he didn't now, he's not endorsing the transhumanist party, to my knowledge, but he did, you know, endorse the Republican Party. And I believe from my understanding, from talking to other people that do know him, um, it's more about the fact is that it's a major party and that he can get things accomplished by going through a Republican Party than he could possibly through us. Um, and his goal in endorsing the Republican Party wasn't because he really believed in Trump. I'm I know that, but he what he was trying to do was influence the FDA so that they could uh, approve treatments that would, um, you know, bear out ways for life extension. So I think this is part of the, 
this is part of the, this is a problem as we talked about. We have a country in the United States here where it's a duopoly. It becomes very difficult for a third party like ourselves to really get any traction. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's frustrating for us, but it also becomes uh, apparent to some of these people that are prominent that just don't see an avenue for any uh, substantive changes to come because we're not, we're not even able to get into that, you know, break that duopoly. So they, they, they end up going to like, as Teal did to the Republican party, even though Republican party doesn't stand for a lot of what he believes um, personally. So anyway, that's what I just wanted to interject because it, it, I think uh, it, it's, there, there's relevance there. And I think that uh, I'm, I, by the way, I am excited to see that France uh, has such a, a powerful interest in transhumanism uh, to the point that they have a, a Luddite people coming after him. Like Chinati said, we don't have that. Uh, I don't want that, but uh, it, 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 just, it, it just tells you that there's a passion there. I, I think unfortunately in the United States, we have a lot of people that, that vote here uh, well, I mean, we have a lot of people interested, but we run a lot of people that vote. Sometimes there's apathy here. Uh, sometimes our voting percentages are really low, considering, uh, you know, the United States and the power it kind of uh, wields throughout the world. But anyway, that was what I wanted to just interject. Yes, indeed. Uh, John, I, you had a response. I have a, no, I have a question. I have a question. Uh, how many members do you have in the U.S. party, U.S. Transamerican party? How many members do you we have? We have about uh, 2,700 at present. Okay. Oh. Spread all over the U.S. or mainly in uh, California and uh, East Coast, or uh, you have all over the states? Uh, they're spread all over the world. Uh, we are unique in that we allow individuals from any place on earth to become allied members. So about 30% of our members are outside of the United States, about 70 are within the United States. And California has a few hundred members, but they're certainly not the majority. Okay. Okay. A another question uh, from my side in your direction. Um, so, uh, with the, the, the US Transhumanist Party and following the, the example uh, of um, uh, Isman, uh, you choose to, uh, to try to act uh, as uh, an independent party. But uh, uh, are there other peoples, like you were talking, uh, Charlie, you were talking about uh, uh, Peter Thiel, but um, can you say, uh, is uh, are there some or a lot of other transhumanists who are trying to act inside the Democrat or the Conservative Party? As you, are you aware of uh, how many, if it's the case? Well, the one person I'm aware of trying to do that is uh, Zoltan Istvan himself. So after he ran for president in 2016 with the U.S. Transhumanist Party, he decided to in 2018, try to run as a libertarian for the governor of California. And then in 2020, he ran in the Republican Party primaries challenging Donald Trump. Uh, but he knew that uh, he wouldn't be able to defeat Trump. It was just a bit more of an open playing field because uh, Trump was the presumed Republican nominee. So other people uh, were not as willing to contest him. Uh, I think three people uh, decided to become serious contenders to Trump and Zoltan was one of them. Uh, but his goal there was also spreading awareness just through different channels, through the Libertarian Party, through the Republican Party. And those are different tactics. One could even see them as part of a broader strategy which is to use the field of politics in order to draw attention to the ideas of transhumanism and get transhumanism associated with technological progress and improvement of human well being in the minds of the public. So, Zoltan has been uh, the biggest advocate for uh, that kind of latter approach, uh, but I think he's more of a pragmatist in the sense that uh, he does not 
wish to uh, stick with one political party in particular. He's happy to switch political parties, which he does quite frequently, uh, whatever he thinks is instrumental to advancing transhumanist ideas. But uh, as the US Transhumanist Party, of course, we embody a very specific branch, let's say, or subset of that broader strategy, uh, which is to try to make inroads as an independent political party. Uh, but ultimately, I think we're all striving toward the same outcomes in the world. And hopefully, in 20 or 30 years, politicians of all political parties are going to say, of course, uh, I'm a transhumanist. Now, I might be a Republican transhumanist or a Democratic transhumanist or a socialist or a libertarian transhumanist, but I'm a transhumanist. A and that, I think, would be a world in which everyone would be uplifted. Yeah. I don't, nothing about uh, the, the other side, for example, only in, inside the, the Democratic Party, are you uh, aware of uh, peoples who are actively trying uh, to, to do the job? Andrew Yang is, uh, is close. He doesn't declare himself as transhumanist, but in the last uh, Democratic uh, primary debate, he was probably the only one I heard on stage that actually said, uh, who spoke to the fact that automation is going to replace all of our jobs at some point, or a lot of them. Uh, he kind of spoke, and then of course he spoke, to, to, I mean, his whole platform was about universal basic income, which is part of our platform. So he came pretty close, uh, I mean, as far as an, an actual transhumanist, but again, uh, he, he, doesn't, he hasn't come out and said it to my knowledge, maybe he has, maybe, maybe Janata, you know about that, I don't know if he has. I think uh, his familiarity with the philosophy of transhumanism is a bit on a surface level. So before uh, the U.S. Transhumanist Party merged with the Transhuman Party. Uh, some of the original representatives of the Transhuman Party uh, held a brief meeting with Andrew Yang, and uh, one of their uh, members, Keith Yu, wrote an article that is uh, still available on the U.S. Transhumanist Party website about that meeting with Andrew Yang, where Keith essentially explained what transhumanism meant to Andrew Yang. And Andrew Yang essentially responded, well, uh, if you put it this way, then uh, yes, I'm a transhumanist. So uh, mm. it was a matter, I think, on his part, not of fearing the term or not wishing to be associated with it, but not having had as much exposure to it yet at that time. But I don't think he would be opposed to transhumanism. I don't think he would shy away from characterizing himself as such. It just hasn't been an emphasis of his messaging. Yeah, I think uh, also it's uh, good to uh, not only focus on the big names like Andrew Yang, and I like following him and listening to what he has to say, but there's an axiom that says all politics is local. So I try to reach out to politicians that uh, are in my local area. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'll go to town hall meetings, or these days they're virtual town hall meetings for people that uh, have just recently running in the primary. So a US representative for the district that I happen to be in, and one of the major political parties was a choice between someone who is a technologist and someone who is a medical doctor. So both of them were actually quite approachable to the ideas of transhumanism. Now, I didn't ask either one of them whether they considered themselves to be a transhumanist. However, I thought it was very fortunate or felt fortunate to me that uh, their answers to many of the questions that I posed to them which were very transhumanist in origin, uh, they, they agreed with. And it wasn't the, yes, if you'll vote for me, I will agree with you type of agreement. These were well thought out answers on things that had to do with uh, life extension, that had to do with uh, improving maybe voting by the use of uh, uh, using 21st century technologies, things of that nature. So I think there are some inroads uh, to be met there. However, segue, I did have a question that had been looming, and it's about uh, politics in France. So if you'll indulge me. The, uh, 
we talk about the difficulties of minor parties in the United States gaining traction, and there are different ways that I and others go about doing that. But I was very envious, Mark, when you said there are 60, 000, or 60 million different uh, uh, minor parties in France, and I, and I understand where you're coming from saying that. If there was a French transhumanist party, then would you seek to ally with other minor political parties? Would you seek to ally with maybe the larger major parties? Where do you see that there would be possible advancements taking transhumanism to a, to a bigger scale politically in France? And Mark, if you wouldn't mind taking on that question. I, I let Mark answer this question. <laughs> okay, but uh, it's going to be interesting to have your opinion too. <laughs> uh, okay, I mentioned the, the Pirates Party. Uh, it's uh, clearly the, the party uh, which is uh, the closest uh, to, to us uh, because there are uh, different ideas. Sure, when you're talking about uh, artificial intelligence uh, and uh, such uh, stuff, uh, um, um, about um, which one they are already aware of, and uh, um, we, we can uh, uh, find a connection uh, on this kind of uh, issues. Um, and the, I think that's the, the general <laughs> uh, political uh, 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 spectrum. It's maybe something like the same, like the French Association. Uh, so it, it could be a, a possibility. Uh, but in the, on the other hand, in France, the, the Pirate Party uh, never had the success they had in uh, uh, Northern European uh, um, uh, countries uh, like uh, Sweden, Finland, or, or, or Germany. Uh, in, in France, uh, it, it remained uh, also a really small party. And uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, you have these uh, uh, difficulties when uh, uh, you, you have a momentum and you meet or you try to, to, to meet another party, the other party can fear that uh, you will uh, just uh, uh, <laughs> eat it, <laughs> devoid. <laughs> and so uh, we have to, to take care of this kind of uh, susceptibility. Um, but uh, to be more um, effective uh, and practical, uh, as I saw the, the things for the, the while uh, with our different uh, experiences, um, it seems to me that, uh, as I, I told you before, that uh, we, we met, we already met uh, some uh, open ears in party like the socialist uh, a party and people so, well, you, you know um, some some uh, guys like uh, Jean-Louis Mélenchon okay now is um, much more uh, like um, a populist uh, a left populist if you want but uh, historically and from his own culture he, he appears from the socialist party for years he was a senator of the socialist party and on the other part, uh, I told about uh, this other guy, which is uh, Jean-Louis Touraine, uh, nowadays is a deputy of the governmental uh, party in France, you know, En Marche, the, the party of uh, Emmanuel Macron. Well, uh, Jean-Louis Touraine for years was a deputy of the Socialist Party. I think that's uh, the, the real um, basis, the real political uh, basis, uh, base where we can find much more... Uh, politicians, which could be uh, open to our audience, is there. I think that it's not um, uh, a miracle if the first party in France, uh, first of all, we, we, uh, we will call us uh, for discussion and then uh, we invite us to be present, to be publicly uh, present to their uh, summer university was the Socialist Party. Because it's, uh, it's a risk, it was a risk for them uh, to say, okay, we have no problem to invite the, the French transhumanists. And uh, um, it, okay, it seems that uh, they, they was right. Uh, they, 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 they haven't any, any problem uh, with, with that. 
uh, and uh, we met uh, uh, other uh, um, uh, representative or other organizers of the of this party, uh, which uh, with which it was possible to to discuss and which was open to to our ideas. Um, so, um, well, okay, if we appear as a party. Okay, the things will be uh, different. It's, uh, it, it is what we were uh, talking about before. It, it will be uh, a communication operation, uh, I think. But if we want uh, to be effective and try to uh, convince uh, uh, other politicians, uh, I think that's the, the, the how do you say that's uh, the, the objective uh, uh, we, we have to, to, to try to reach. The, 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 the heart could be some, somewhere by there. And I say that it's not a personal position, it's just an analysis of my, uh, how I say the things in, in France. Uh, now, I will say uh, uh, a pessimistic uh, 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 thing is that the, 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 the Socialist Party in the, the last years was in a very, very bad uh, uh, period of his uh, history. With the, the win of the, uh, Emmanuel Macron, a socialist party fell, uh, I think, something like down of uh, less than 15%, which was a party which was able to, to reach uh, 36 uh, and near 40% at, at the time. Uh, I didn't hear you. Uh, no, uh, please proceed. Uh, oh, sorry. I don't uh, think anyone else uh, said anything. But it's a, uh, it's a, it's a pity for us uh, that uh, maybe the the main party we will be more open to our ideas. It's not in the period of uh, it's, it's not an, in, in a good momentum, uh, but uh, it's in a, in a period of uh, difficulties. But uh, we we never know. No, for example, it's an old party which have uh, uh, important uh, local roots. And so with the, uh, the uh, local election we just had, uh, it take back uh, a, a new breath. Uh, so we never know. We will see what, what could be possible. Maybe uh, you mentioned a socialist party, but we have on the right side of the center, a previous minister like Luc Ferry and Jean-Francois Coupé, who uh, uh, did uh, who wrote books about transhumanism, and if really we want our ideas to win, probably what uh, we should do is to let one of them, which are I would say professional uh, politician, to join uh, AFT. And uh, doing so, we would have a faster progress than if we want by ourselves to be more and more known. So my, my point of view from a practical uh, approach is to try to capture one existing politician not far from our ideas and to take him as our leader for the next elections either in the social uh, socialist party or in the republican or uh, center right that's my id yeah yeah uh, i agree with jean in this point uh, we had uh, discussed a uh, di different uh, time that we need to have uh, maybe a charlie cam we need to have uh, 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 people who may who know who know very well to, to do the job for the while uh, it's sure that in in the in the in our, our network we we haven't the personality uh, the good personality to to appear uh, and to do this job and maybe if we 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 try to go in politics without this person with without this personality Mm, maybe it, it will be a, a big risk, uh, uh, um, uh, an explanation for, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the fact that we, 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 did, we, we, we won't succeed uh, with, without such a, a personality. And Jean may be uh, uh, right saying that it could be in this really specific uh, uh, objective, 
and this goal it will be more important to have the good personality even if from his own personal opinion uh, it's uh, i don't know much for, to the right to the left or up or down uh, but uh, it will be much important uh, for him to 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 know very well to to do the job and that's an interesting observation. Uh, I would say there are various flavors of transhumanism or various degrees of emphasis that could be placed on ideas within transhumanism since the scope of transhumanism is quite broad. And as long as a candidate is a good communicator, is civil and respectful and well-behaved, the degree of emphasis uh, that individual places on one aspect of transhumanism versus another is of secondary importance because that person is still advancing the broader field. So one of the positive aspects of our 2019 primary election was the breadth of discussion about policy and ideas. We had nine candidates, and some of them were better behaved than others. Uh, but I would say six of the nine were reasonably well behaved. And in the debates, they definitely brought out a broad range of policy positions that they took with a transhumanist focus on them. So, uh, for instance, uh, John Carrots, uh, who was one of the candidates, uh, he's here in this meeting, uh, has a great deal of expertise on energy issues and environmental issues. And a lot of good policy ideas came from him uh, during those debates. Uh, so that was a great perspective to have. Uh, and we had Matt Taylor, who was a, uh, an educator uh, who uh, came with his own ideas, uh, but he had kind of independently arrived at a transhumanist perspective. And then he found the transhumanist party and uh, he uh, saw it as a good opportunity to run and uh, bring that perspective to the forefront. Uh, so those are just some examples, uh, but having the right demeanor uh, to be a candidate, uh, I think is crucial for achieving that broader appeal, which is why uh, we're very pleased to have Charlie, uh, because I think Charlie uh, meets all of those criteria. So uh, now, <laughs> certainly, uh, let us go to some of the questions from our audience, because we do have quite a few, uh, even going back to the beginning. So Jason Geringer uh, made more of a comment than a question, but this was in response to Mark's presentation about some of the hostility that transhumanism faced in France. He said, to stop transhumanism, you would have to go back in time to stop that first guy from making a stone tool. So uh, there is uh, an emphasis there on the fact that the use of technology to transform the human condition isn't a new phenomenon. It has indeed been with us since humans evolved their current brain capacity. And yet a lot of people for some reason think that emerging technologies of this generation are somehow unusual. And yet, if you go back to uh, how people thought about rail travel in the mid 19th century, or how they thought about open heart surgery in the 1950s, or how they thought about in vitro fertilization in the late 1970s, you'll find uh, similar resistance. Uh, Paul Spiegel uh, quoted Michael Corleone uh, stating, if nobody hates you, you're doing something wrong. Uh, so perhaps it's a good sign that transhumanism is meeting this kind of resistance. Now, uh, Dan Elton mentions that uh, the term immortality also carries a lot of baggage in the U.S. as well, both among secular and religious people. Uh, and this is a good bridge into a question that I have. So France, of course, has a much longer 
secular tradition than uh, some other countries dating back to the French Revolution and of course the influences of the Age of Enlightenment uh, led to the secularism emerging. In the United States, there's a kind of polarization and unfortunately uh, one party has become associated uh, with a certain fervent religiosity. Another party has been associated with a kind of stereotyped secularism and neither is particularly nuanced. Uh, but do you think that the secularism which is prevalent in France actually gives transhumanism an advantage, especially given the enlightenment era roots that both this kind of secularism and transhumanism have? I'm not so sure it's an advantage uh, for the, the question of uh, the, the issue of um, uh, transhumanism. I think much more it's, uh, it's uh, it, 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 I'll say that it, it has the question in, uh, uh, in different terms, because it, it shows that uh, we have the, all those uh, resistance. So uh, maybe we, we can expect that uh, uh, with this uh, secularism, the, the things will be uh, easiest, but at the end, it, it's not so so much, and uh, uh, we we see that the resistances um, um, came from the both parts. If I talk again about uh, politics, uh, we have uh, uh, two uh, uh, big uh, uh, sources of uh, opposition. From the uh, the one hand, uh, we have the uh, the religious conservatives, uh, specifically the the ultra catholics uh, in france and uh, but, but in the other hand uh, we have a, a, a big part of a part of the of the left or a, a big part of uh, the, the the green parties the the, the ecological um, members of, the, of the, those parties um, and it's uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, strange to see that uh, uh, on some quite precise points uh, they agree between them, uh, uh, the, 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 the Catholic, the conservative Catholics and uh, the uh, <clears throat> progressive uh, uh, ecologists on, on the on the other hand, on the other hand. Um, um, the, I think that um, the we our, our most the, the, the most difficulties don't come from the rights. Uh, I think that uh, um, quite often, uh, the, the, um, the traditional conservatives uh, are front of their own uh, contradictions. And uh, uh, when they meet the, 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 the really uh, deepness of transhumanism, for example, the fact that we are fighting for life, at the end, mm, they are obliged in some way uh, to find another way to explain with the, 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 the same words and the same beliefs uh, that uh, at the end it's not so uh, bad things. Um, uh, another uh, uh, way to say it is that, um, well, uh, the first um, uh, external organization uh, we re really came to us and tried to discuss was a Catholic organization. We have in France, after all the, what I say, we have really good uh, contacts and we work uh, with uh, the, the, the Catholic University of Lille, where in parentheses, uh, uh, Francesca Ferrando was uh, uh, present uh, last uh, year. Uh, we was together at a colloquium uh, with uh, Stefan Zonier and they organized, uh, you know, the Behind uh, Humanism Colloquium in the uh, Catholic University of Lille, all together. It's quite interesting, I think. Um, or uh, uh, for the, 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 little, the, the, the little entrepreneurs uh, who was able to discuss with, uh, we have um, um, a union of Catholics entrepreneurs, and they call us, and I was able to intervene in their uh, an, an annual assembly, uh, and uh, it, uh, it shows that a lot of them was uh, quite uh, open to the discussion and a lot of uh, the ideas. On the other side, the problem I was uh, talking with you, the, 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 
the most hard people uh, are on the left sides. Um, some of them are anarchists, or some of them are, uh, you know, uh, deep ecologists, uh, eventually uh, catastrophic uh, catastrophologists. Uh, um, so uh, I think that the the biggest problem at the end came from people who supposedly are more uh, secular, secularized, sorry, uh, than the, the the other parts. Uh, so I, I return to my first answer. Uh, this uh, specificity of France, it's not maybe not um, um, necessarily uh, an advantage. This is very interesting. And indeed, it mirrors uh, a lot of my observations as well, in the sense that we haven't gotten a lot of pushback from the traditionalist conservative right in the United States either. And most of the disagreements have been civil. Uh, so Dr. Fazal Rana, who is a, also a Christian apologist, essentially. And we had a great civil discussion with him. Uh, on the other hand, we have a lot of issues with what I call the hard left, uh, people who are so invested in uh, conventional partisan left-wing ideology that they see anything that differs from that as a threat. And some of them call themselves anarchists. Uh, some of them call themselves uh, ecologists or environmentalists, but they're not the kinds of environmentalists who just want to clean up pollution and conserve national parks. They're the kinds of environmentalists who follow Ted, Kaczy uh, Ted Kaczynski uh, in wanting to destroy uh, civilization. And some of them will call themselves anarcho-primitivists, for example, but it's those radical strains of the left, the militant strains, uh, which I think have clashed with us the most. There have been strains of the right that have clashed with us as well, but those have tended to be more of the militant populist variety. And some of them also call themselves anarchists, by the way, they advocate for violent street action or uh, very transgressive cultural expression. Uh, it seems that people who I would characterize as softly left wing or softly right wing, are at least willing to have a conversation with us and that conversation uh, provides an opening. So uh, thank you for those observations. I think it's a good time uh, for David to provide his uh, concluding remarks on this discussion because I know David, you have to go in eight minutes. So the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Janati. And uh, this discussion is going so well, I really regret needing to go in eight minutes, but I do have another obligation. So uh, from a concluding remarks point of view, I want to thank both our guests for coming today. This has been really quite enlightening. I really enjoy hearing about uh, transhumanism all over the world. And it's a real treat to hear about that from the French point of view today. Uh, all too aware of uh, the uh, issues that we have in this country trying to bring the transhumanist message. It's encouraging in many regards to hear what's going on uh, in France. So thank you for, for bringing that uh, to us today. Real, very much appreciate that. Indeed, thank you for those good words. Mark, go ahead. Yes, our pleasure, and I hope that, uh, you know, uh, Jenny, it, um, from years, we, at the end, we, we haven't, uh, I, I have the impression that we haven't uh, so much uh, uh, occasion to discuss like we, we did tonight uh, with, uh, yes, okay, let's say the, 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 the other part of the Atlantic. <laughs> um, we, we have the occasion to, to work on really specific projects 
with Natasha, with uh, James Hughes, etc. Um, uh, but uh, not in this uh, in this way. And well, I, I really hope that uh, this uh, this kind of occasion uh, will be uh, possible uh, again and again. You know that uh, Didier Cornell uh, uh, is. Uh, really happy himself uh, to talk about the uh, about longevity in France uh, and I, I hope that it will be another occasion and uh, if um, it's possible uh, to talk about uh, so much uh, uh, issues uh, we, we have uh, yes uh, surely uh, for, for our party it will be uh, uh, re really really interesting so thank you so much yes indeed and uh, I think this has been a great conversation. Hopefully uh, we will be able to continue it for a bit longer, but we are always open to hosting subsequent uh, virtual enlightenment salons as well. And if Didier or other members of AFT Technoprog would like to be our guests for those salons, uh, we would be happy to set that up. I will also say that in some ways the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated uh, our ability to have these conversations because now so many more of us use Zoom and other video conferencing software as our primary method of reaching other people. Whereas in the past, uh, largely international communications were in the form of various conferences that took place from time to time. Sometimes there would be email communication, but having these in-depth conversations is actually better suited to this medium uh, rather than an in-person conference, because with an in-person conference, yes, you could attend some presentations, you might have lunch with someone, but some of those encounters tend to be more fleeting, uh, or there's more time pressure because one has to go on to the next thing, or the encounters happen incidentally. Uh, but in this type of setting where we set aside a few hours for really in-depth explorations, I believe a lot of progress can be made. So the virtual enlightenment salons, I think, have been great at facilitating that. And this is a great example of it. Now, uh, while we're on the point of longevity, uh, Mike de Verde wanted to know, uh, how does one say super longevity in France and whether uh, the words uh, immortality and longevity and super longevity would have the same meanings, the same uh, connotations when spoken in French as compared to English? Well, for uh, longevity, super longevity, we, we have no problems. Uh, on the contrary, uh, really often we choose to, to start uh, to, to, to speak about the different issues by those kind of, of terms uh, because they are not uh, controversial. And uh, as I show uh, with, if you remember, uh, the, 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 the bars, um, the a great majority of uh, people uh, have a tendency uh, to answer uh, really positively uh, to that kind of uh, uh, of question. Uh, they are so proud, you know, uh, to have a Jean Calment uh, as uh, <laughs> the people that who live uh, the most years. Uh, and so they are really attentive. They are pri proud that uh, France still have a, a good level uh, in this kind of uh, direction. Uh, so you have a general um, um, a communication from the media that uh, uh, the France have still a, his place uh, uh, about all, all that. I, I, I give the example of, of uh, Emmanuel Charpentier or, or the, the Carmat uh, Heart, etc. Uh, but we have hopefully uh, other examples. And uh, so, uh, in general, uh, you have a, it, it, for us, it's a good, a good, a really good entry uh, uh, to, to, to try to speak about uh, transhumanism. Um, and so, yes, uh, Didier do it really quite, quite well and, and really often and, and other uh, between us. Um, but, but as I say, the, uh, the term immortality, it's a, a little um, most, uh, much uh, cautious uh, because uh, of what I was uh, answering maybe uh, 
already uh, about the fact that, uh, for example, uh, it happens uh, quite often that uh, or I was in some debate or, or I, I, uh, I, I hear some debate and uh, um, I, I had uh, uh, around me uh, people who was trying to, to discuss the, the both or the, the, the three, the fourth uh, person so was using the term immortality. But in reality, they, they didn't uh, spoke about the, the, the same thing. The, the one was uh, in the, um, the, the, the religious concept and the, the other was on the, on the scientific uh, uh, concept of longevity, for example. Um, and so, um, um, I don't know, I have a question maybe in return. Uh, sometimes I have the impression that, uh, for example, in the United States, uh, because maybe that, that's the, the, the secularism, as not the, the history that we have in, in, in France, uh, it's not so much a problem to, to blur uh, the, those uh, two parts of the concept. And that's so you, you can use the term immortality uh, without um, precision, without saying if you are on the uh, the, the scale of the, the metaphysic or the religious uh, aspect of the things, or if you are on the, the pragmatic and the scientific uh, part of the, the things, and the discussion is possible. Uh, in France, it's quite problematic. <laughs> you, you have to, to precise, uh, or uh, um, uh, each person, uh, uh, it's, uh, how to say, uh, uh, a dumb uh, uh, discussion. It seems that the French like uh, the precision of their terms uh, to a greater extent than Americans in the sense that uh, American culture and language have always been uh, a bit more pragmatic. Uh, I often find that in uh, conversations uh, with Americans, the key is to get the meaning across. And if it becomes possible to really know what the other side means or intends, then the discussion can proceed. Now that's a bit of a double-edged sword because sometimes uh, people who, let's say, want to misconstrue something or want to assign sinister motives will not care what sort of uh, technical or precise language one uses to describe a concept, they'll just say, oh, but you really want to uh, have a wealthy technocratic elite enslave everybody and uh, hoard all the life extension technologies to themselves. And of course, no transhumanist believes that, uh, but some people will take issue with the ideas no matter how they're expressed. And what I find is, in the United States, if one uses a qualifier like biological immortality or technological immortality, uh, people will understand what that means. Some people choose not to use those terms, so they will use super longevity or indefinite life extension or just life extension. And in the transhumanist party, we are quite flexible in terms of uh, being open to all of those uh, terminological approaches, depending on what people individually believe to be more effective. So if they want to use immortality, if they don't want to use immortality, that's up to them as long as they can get their meaning across. So if they say immortality, uh, I think it's important to clarify this isn't indestructibility uh, because the technologies we're advocating for, at least in the near-term horizon, are not going to make people immune from automobile accidents or super volcanoes or meteors hitting the earth. Uh, rather, uh, we are going to achieve hopefully negligible senescence or longevity escape velocity. Those are other terms that some people like to use. What's most important is to get people to be able to conceptualize what that world looks like. So this is a world where medical science and technology are so far advanced that we can repair the damage of biological aging and restore the body to youthfulness. And a component of that could also be uh, some artificial augmentations, artificial organs uh, that could also serve as a bridge to a longer lifespan. So 
what I believe is most important is to have that time window for that kind of conversation, to have some sort of opening to the discussion where one can introduce these ideas, whether one uses the term immortality or not, if the speaker can communicate with the listener and form a certain rapport, then the vision of that kind of future world can get communicated. And then uh, there will be other objections. Some people will use the boredom argument or the overpopulation argument, uh, but those can be fairly readily responded to and refuted as well in my experience. It's all about, I think, the mind frame of the listener, the openness of the listener to having these kinds of discussions. Uh, so that's my impression. If anyone else on the panel uh, wants to speak to uh, that and how uh, they have observed any uh, variations uh, in different countries or uh, different subgroups within American society uh, with regard to receptiveness, to these terms. Uh, I know, for instance, Pavel, uh, you've had a lot of experience with the Russian transhumanist movement. And it doesn't seem to me like uh, specific references to immortality are problematic uh, from a metaphysical perspective in Russia. In Russia, it's more of a, a kind of cultural fatalism that uh, says, sure, these ideas are great, but life is bad now. Uh, what confidence do we have that it's going to improve? Uh, so uh, I welcome any other remarks or observations on this. Let's see, anyone from the panel? I know that uh... One of our great transhumanists, Natasha Vitamore, does not like the term in immortality at all, and she prefers indefinite lifespan uh, because immortality means, uh, to her, she says it means without death, and that is, uh, you know, as you said, impossible to predict, considering that there could be things that happen. So she tends to use that phrase, and I've noticed that other transhumanists uh, like to use the term indefinite lifespan. For me, that I, I, I understand that term and I get that phrase, indefinite lifespan. Just something about the word indefinite seems a little weird to me. <laughs> you know, I like to, like to definitely live, you know, for a long time, so. Yes, two meanings of the word definite uh, there uh, are involved. So, Pavel, it seems that you're back. Uh, any uh, comments on uh, your experience with how immortality or uh, other terms for our goals in achieving indefinite life extension are perceived in Russia? Um, well, the word immortality perceived pretty good in Russia because we have a, they have a, a, a heritage of the Russian cosmism and the ideas of the internal life, even if it's not here, but somewhere there. Uh, they are uh, very deep rooted in a culture, and in my experience, uh, I would also like, avoid uh, use the term immortality because you know we don't know how to solve the thermical death of the universe, so uh, we cannot grant that we can uh, live indefinitely long. Not like, yet. Not yet. Yes. Not. The, I, I agree. Not yet at our current knowledge, understanding of the universe. But yes, if when we uh, realize how to uh, how to travel to another universe or how to rebuild this universe, uh, that we can we can come back to this term. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, we should use terms like uh, uh, involuntary death or uh, uh, yeah, we should use the term like Prevent and prevention of voluntary death, something like that. Uh, because yes, immortality, it's it's too universal and too and too impossible right now. Well, I would hope that with billions of years, uh, problems like the heat death of the universe uh, won't be so daunting anymore, considering that humankind in its present form has only existed essentially uh, for about 20,000 years and 
10,000 of those have been by far the most productive. So now uh, I think it's a good time to uh, go to our next question, which is from Zach Richardson. Uh, Zach asks, what is your response to those opposing our support of indefinite life extension who cite a Malthusian disaster, for instance, nonstop population growth uh, with no death to counteract it? And we ventured into this uh, briefly by discussing how some of these uh, hard left uh, movements uh, who also tend to be more Luddite in nature uh, are some of the most strident opponents of transhumanism. So uh, Mark and Jean, when you encounter those kinds of sentiments, the neo-Malthusian types of arguments, uh, how do you respond? And what do you think are some of the most effective strategies for countering them? Yeah, um, yes, yeah, so it's a really quite often a reaction and kind of a question or much more objections and hard objection. It could be expressed with something, even a rude kind of behavior. But well, I think that we just, we just try uh, to stay as close as we know, uh, um, uh, close to the, the, the scientific uh, uh, and the, um, the rational explanations. Uh, we are just uh, uh, trying to uh, deconstruct uh, the, the question to point uh, the, the contradiction, which are uh, numerous uh, in those uh, objections. Uh, for example, um, the, the really... Uh, 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 th th this question, uh, the, um, this objection of the, the, the problems of the, the demography, uh, it's a classical one. And uh, uh, well, I think that for us, it's really easy to answer because we have just to, uh, to quote uh, the demograph. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, saying, we, for, for instance, uh, you had a really inst uh, recent um, uh, uh, studies uh, we, which uh, was showing that the, the worst um, um, perspective uh, for the, the end of the century uh, is probably wrong. And uh, the, the middle uh, hypothesis may be uh, the, the, the most um, uh, um, prob probable. Uh, and probable and um, um, it's not even not uh, impossible that uh, uh, from the end of the century, uh, the, the world, uh, world trend, uh, population uh, starts uh, to decline. So uh, for, the, for the, the most people, this hypothesis for the, for the while, it's just uh, un understandable because uh, we have so much for, for years and years, for, for dozens of years, the, the message that uh, uh, the, the main problem is overpopulation. Uh, so it's, it's too, too much uh, contra contradictory with uh, what they have in mind. Uh, but you have just to, to show the numbers. Uh, we have, you have just to show the, the, these, these studies. And uh, uh, it starts to, it, it's like a, a sand, uh, cock, a sand uh, for you. Something starts to go wrong, to goes wrong. And uh, you, you can see sometimes the, uh, in the eyes of the people that, oh, okay, maybe the things are not that, uh, like I was thinking. And uh, I have to, to try to understand uh, those things uh, differently. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's the, the way we are trying to, to work in, in general. But saying that, um, I know that that's kind of, um, it is my way of uh, working because, okay, it, it, probably it's my personality uh, that to, to use uh, rational uh, explanations. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, I know that uh, it's not um, um, maybe uh, the, the, the most quickly effective uh, uh, way of uh, working. And uh, so I... Uh, um, between us, we have uh, other uh, spokespersons um, 
For example, I, I really liked the way one of uh, our member, uh, which is uh, Guillaume Velve Casquillas, <laughs> it's a, a French, is Spanish uh, 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 entrepreneur. Uh, it's a multi entrepreneur. It, it has a different uh, uh, startup in the, the biotechs. And uh, um, he, he, he explained the things uh, quite differently. Uh, he, he tried to explain the things with uh, uh, much more uh, images, videos, and um, uh, so probably his answer will be different uh, than mine. But uh, I, okay, I think that's uh, the different um, uh, way to 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 answer to those uh, objections and. Uh, Yes, uh, every one of us can do a part of, of the job. So there is no kind of answer. Yes, thank you for that response. And I do think for a lot of people, this issue, this concern about overpopulation is a matter of having obsolete information. Largely people remember the uh, very fearful uh, rhetoric and uh, some of the literature that was published on the subject in the late 1960s, early 1970s, after the world had had a baby boom and uh, population increased dramatically by essentially several billion within the span of two decades. And some people like Paul Ehrlich of the population bomb fame thought that this would continue indefinitely. And yet we've seen with the development of much of the world industrially, technologically, educationally, birth rates are falling everywhere to the point where they are below the replacement rate in most Western countries now. And as a result, I think if a lot of people were to be made aware of that, their concern would be reduced. I found in discussions where I bring that up, the concern does get reduced. It does not get altogether eliminated because people will say, ah, but if people stop dying today, we would reverse that trend, uh, to which I would respond that the rate of birth actually impacts the overall population to a much greater extent than the rate of death. And indeed, if everybody stopped dying tomorrow, we would still have a lower rate of population growth given the birth rates of today than existed in the 1950s and early 1960s during the baby boom. So that's another way of taking that argument a little bit further and perhaps dealing the final blow to uh, the concerns about overpopulation that if the most extreme scenario envisioned by these people happens, we still would be in a situation that the world has adapted to already. Yeah, I, I didn't answer maybe precisely. I don't know if the, the in the question, uh, the, 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 the question was just uh, how did we respond or uh, in general, uh, uh, or if the, the person wants the clear answer, <laughs> because I didn't give the, your answer, uh, the, the clear answer. But for, for instance, one of us uh, stakeholder uh, had make a, a video, Alexandre Technoprog exactly, made a, a video in which uh, uh, he, he had made the, the exact uh, calculation uh, to uh, show the difference between uh, a population uh, with uh, uh, fecundation rates of two uh, children by uh, woman with infinite lifespan and uh, uh, a population uh, with uh, fecundation rate of 2.1 and uh, with uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, life expectancy we have uh, nowadays. And you show the, the, the curves. And yeah, you immediately, you really quickly understand that the problem, it's not uh, even if you want to say immortality or immortality, <laughs> the problem is the, uh, the fecundation rate and, and nothing else. Yes, indeed. And actually, if after the salon, you could send uh, us a link to this video, it would be most interesting to watch and also to share as a part of our toolkit of resources to help people 
see some of these comparisons visually uh, in addition to hearing the arguments. So. Absolutely. If I can say, uh, Gennady, we, I think that just what you say, it uh, could be a, a, an important part of the, the work we, we have to do in the, the coming month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, because we've each developed certain resources that I think would be useful if expanded to a broader context. And uh, this kind of exchange of information will uh, give us an idea of what exists out there already that could be persuasive to the general public and advance uh, our work. So yes, uh, I completely agree with that. Now, Zach Richardson also had a question uh, with regard to the narrative you gave about the history of the ecological parties in France. And he wants to know if you could elaborate on uh, what you meant by left-wing versus right-wing ecology. How do those uh, branches of the ecological movement differ from one another? Well, um, the, the first answer um, coming to my, to my mind is that uh, they choose uh, different alliances. Uh, um, uh, the, the the most part in France, I, I speak about the, uh, the situation in France clearly. Uh, the, the greatest part um, in the in the eighties uh, uh, tried to make alliances so with uh, left parties, especially uh, the socialist party. Um, it was quite clear that at the same time, when uh, immediately when uh, the the ecologists. Uh, especially, specifically the, the Green Party, uh, starts to ha have uh, some results. Uh, they knew a phenomenon of, uh, how do you say that, entrance. You know, a, a lot of um, um, activists from the left enter the Green Party, uh, trying to grab it uh, to, the, to the left and even uh, to, the, to the far left. And uh, in the part, uh, they, they succeed uh, at this time. Um, in in parallel, the the part of the of the of the activist of the ecologist activist who uh, didn't agree with uh, these trends, uh, first of all, try to to build their own party, which they call uh, at this time they try to uh, to stay uh, up wingers, but uh, uh, they didn't succeed, and really quickly uh, they enter different party uh, on the right of the spectrum. Um, and uh, after that, for quite a long time, there was only one uh, appearing uh, uh, a Green Party, which was uh, uh, quite uh, clearly uh, on the left. Um, maybe I can say uh, until the, the, the middle or the end of the 90s, uh, uh, where uh, the, the first Green Party had uh, little uh, difficulties, and uh, uh, they tried to make uh, alliances uh, with uh, uh, people which was uh, much more uh, in, the, in the center, which was much more in favor of uh, uh, in economically liberal positions. Um, and then they knew a new, they, 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 yes, they had a new, a new momentum. Um, well, that means that, so for example, I remember at a uh, European election, they reached uh, something like uh, 13%, okay? Um, uh, and uh, from that time, uh, it stay by there. That means an alliance between... It, 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 uh, actually, the name of the French uh, ecologist party is still uh, <laughs> uh, Europe ecology, uh, 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 European ecology, les verts, the greens. But it means that there is a part we, which are still the greens, which was traditionally more in, uh, on the left, and the other part, which is Europe ecology, uh, European ecology, which is the part which is more uh, open to um, uh, liberal e economy. Um, and well, okay, now the, the, the actual momentum is uh, certainly quite uh, different. 
uh, because it's I think that's a, it's a, a, a consequences of all the the, um, the, the, the fact that a lot of people uh, are now aware of the, the danger of the, the, the climate uh, crisis, uh, uh, the, the biological, the, 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 the crisis of the biodiversity, etc., etc. Um, so they uh, now the, the things are very, uh, uh, very here, very, very present, uh, and uh, so the, peop the, the, the most people think that uh, it's better to give power to the real ecologists than all the parties, because uh, now uh, everybody, in France, everybody, uh, almost everybody, uh, it's supposed to be ecologists. Uh, you, you have a, a, an ecologist part of the program, uh, even in the, I don't know, uh, the, the, the far uh, right or in the, the traditional, uh, the conservative, etc. everybody want to be ecologists. Uh, but uh, uh, much people also think that uh, to be effective, uh, real ecologists uh, <laughs> have to, to be in charge. Um, so that this is the, the, the actual uh, momentum, uh, I, I think. Uh, with that, I don't know if I uh, had uh, I have answered clearly to the to the question. I think you did. Uh, I think that was a, a very informative overview of the developments that led to a kind of left wing versus right wing orientation among the French ecological parties, and it's interesting. Generally, uh, I take the, the occasion maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to add a point uh, which is uh, very important uh, for the uh, French association, Technoprog, um, which is to say that um, at the, the, the start of uh, this year, we end uh, a work uh, which uh, takes us uh, several months uh, to work and vote at the level of the association um, uh, a text uh, you, you maybe maybe you are aware of by uh, Didier, <laughs> which we, we we called a Veridian Manifesto, and uh, uh, okay, it's in French and in English uh, on uh, our site on the on the site of the association, and uh, uh, it's um, I don't know uh, we, we try to have uh, some and uh, a consensual a consensual. Uh, uh, opinion or way of, of expression about our, uh, of, our, our positions uh, about all the environmental uh, uh, issues. And uh, uh, as I say, I say that uh, for uh, uh, Technoprog, the, the three pillars uh, was uh, uh, transhumanism and health, transhumanism and environmental uh, issues, transhumanism and social issues. So this uh, part of the question uh, for us is very, very important. And yes, I, indeed. I invite everybody to, to, to discover this uh, document. And I have provided a link to the Viridian Manifesto in the chat. So uh, hopefully people will follow that link and uh, explore that. Zach Richardson says that he would very much like to see uh, this consensus on environmental issues. So uh, you're going to have at least one reader from this. And I would also say this uh, idea that everyone in France today tries to express some sort of ecological platform, some sort of affinity with the ecological movement is a situation that we would like the transhumanist movement to be in, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But if in 10 years or 20 years, uh, politicians are saying, uh, I'm a transhumanist, irrespective of what else they believe, and people in the general public also identify as transhumanists, uh, that will be the kind of world we want to live in. But in the meantime, there are some risks, as you mentioned, this idea of entryism by people with more conventional political perspectives who try to change the character of the organization, try to make it more conventionally left-wing or right-wing, though it seems in the French situation, the left-wing entryism was more widespread and more successful. And I think this is a tactic that is deleterious in the long run because it takes 
what is a unique set of ideas and organization that is structured on an innovative and creative premise and tries to make it more conventional, tries to make it a tool into uh, some existing uh, partisan struggle, just a, a feeder organization into a larger set of groups and conflicts that uh, may not really be at the core of what that original organization is seeking to accomplish. So hopefully, not just transhumanist organizations, but all organizations that are founded on some new and interesting and innovative premise can develop some sort of immune system, uh, some set of mechanisms, whether they're more explicit rules or uh, they're more of a cultural type of environment that would resist this kind of entryism, that would tell people uh, essentially you're free to engage with our organization and uh, try to forward its goals, but do that without changing the fundamental nature of the organization and what it stands for. So I think that's a very important lesson uh, to derive from the narrative that you gave and the examples that you provided. So now let us move on to uh, another question that uh, we have received. And this one is also from Zach Richardson. If you had to pick two transhumanist issues uh, that you would like to see both of our organizations focus on, what would they be? The, the US Transhumanist Party and for the wide, the, the French uh, Transhumanist Association, maybe uh, tomorrow, a kind of a French uh, political organization. Hmm. It's not, I didn't think about that. Uh, uh -huh, uh, or what issue precisely will be most interest to, um, to, 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 to encounter are, are both um, uh, concentration on, 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 well, maybe, well, uh, uh, because yeah, really I, I didn't think about it uh, previously, uh, but uh, um, I had to say that uh, uh, longevity may or um, will remain for a, a long time uh, the, the, the easiest, the more logical um, uh, uh, way to, to, to go. Um, uh, I, I feel that uh, in each country, not only uh, the US and France, uh, but uh, in Great Britain, in Italy, um, maybe in Russia, as far as I know, uh, uh, the biggest uh, organization, the more concrete organization, uh, are working uh, on, uh, yes, so say it like you want, uh, uh, infinitive or indefinite <laughs> uh, lifespan, etc. Um, so uh, probably uh, not not only because it's important, because because I can say that for my part. The, the, the issue I find uh, more important uh, above all is uh, what, I don't know, in, uh, in English you can say uh, moral enhancements. Uh, I'm from the part that uh, a really long life without any moral enhancements, it's not so much interesting. <laughs> uh, I do prefer, uh, yes, I see Charlie uh, doing that, and I remember uh, the, uh, I heard you, Charlie, uh, in a previous uh, uh, um, uh, saloon, uh, enlightenment saloon, and uh, you were some, saying something like, like that, uh, and I, I agree, uh, absolutely, that, that's my, my personal um, position. Uh, but in the same time, I, I say that for me, and with Charlie, which is your uh, spokesperson for the, the presidential the, the election, at the same time, from a, a strategical point of view, I believe that uh, we have to focus on, on uh, super longevity. Yeah. So if I could characterize your response in terms of two issues, they would be super longevity and moral enhancement. 
Yes, and, and so yeah, I forgot the, the second one, and, and I read and I answer <laughs> by, the, by this way. <laughs> yes, uh, so uh, this is a subject that I think is already fascinating uh, some of the commentators in our chat. So Zach Richardson would like you to elaborate more. Uh, Dan Elton is asking if you're talking about uh, pharmaceuticals that increase morality or empathy, or uh, if you're talking about more of a conceptual approach, like reasoning one's way to being uh, more moral, or even uh, in the future, something more dramatic, like restructuring the human brain to alter perhaps some of our evolved dispositions and turn them into tendencies that are more favorable for functioning in a technological society as opposed to a hunter-gatherer society. Yeah, I, I'm uh, really uh, talking about the, the scientific uh, point of view. Uh, okay, right, for my part, uh, because I, I, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not an, an informatician, I'm not a biologist, I am a, an, an historian by uh, training, <laughs> you know. So, okay, uh, I have the, this the tendency to uh, think about the theoretical uh, point of view, first of all, uh, really often, but uh, uh, um, and on this point, I think that uh, uh, we have to think about what is uh, feasible, uh, practically. And uh, um, uh, I think that, yes, the, the, the pharmaceutical uh, approach is important, but uh, I follow as uh, close as I can uh, different uh, other approaches, um, uh, for example, uh, different kind of uh, implants uh, which are uh, uh, developed. Uh, and okay, I don't know what exactly Elon, Elon Musk are doing <laughs> with uh, uh, Neuralink, uh, but uh, and, uh, but I, I will very like to, to to know much more this year. I waiting him <laughs> and from before the end of 2020, he said. Uh, but at the same time, for example, um, I don't know if you're aware about. Uh, uh, an experiment which is uh, uh, supposed to start a clinical uh, first level uh, experiences in Paris at uh, the Institute of uh, um, Mind, if I translate to uh, Institut du Cerveau in Paris, with uh, uh, Howard Newton, Howard Newton, uh, which is uh, from uh, Harvard. But uh, uh, he, he, he chose because he, I think that he, he studied one year in Paris and he chose uh, uh, the Institut du Cerveau to develop the Kiwi implant uh, with uh, his uh, startup uh, NI2. Uh, you, you're aware of it. And for me, uh, I think that it's really, really important and interesting to follow that because it will be the first implant which is. Uh, able to, to be controlled uh, without uh, uh, um, uh, difficulty or problems of infection because it's so small, you haven't uh, to uh, make any hole in your skull. You can make the implantation uh, in, uh, by, the, by the nose and it's, it's so small, it's uh, nano-manufactured. Um, so uh, I think that we, we have that there uh, something really, really interesting, and sure, he is obliged uh, uh, to say that uh, uh, first of all, uh, the this implant uh, will be used for um, illness uh, like uh, 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 neurodegenerative uh, uh, illness. Uh, uh, but when you hear uh, talking about uh, his uh, perspectives, uh, it's clear from for himself that uh, uh, he is speaking about uh, moral enhancement. So um, uh, I think that's, um, yes, with a little much more money, which, uh, with a little much more possibility to, to speak about, clearly to speak about transhumanism and not about uh, Alzheimer, et cetera. It's, it's really important to, 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 to fight Alzheimer, but <laughs> uh, we are still, uh, uh, blocked by the this uh, uh, the this uh, context that made that uh, uh, nothing it's possible outside of medicine, and uh, I think that I think that's politically we have 
to to fight in this direction. If I can, I don't know. My answer is starting to to go away. But uh, uh, for example, when I spoke to the the Ministry of uh, of Defense or in the uh, in the Ministry of Health uh, the, in France, that that was probably the main point of what I was trying to say. Uh, that, that is uh, that we have uh, to. Uh, to have a, a paradigm shift in the, in this model politically, and um, as I say, it's interesting to you know the the answer of the the reaction of the audience was it was not uh, I didn't receive any tomatoes, uh, no no shouting, it was something like a silence, and it wasn't bad. Because uh, I, I couldn't understand that people was just thinking about it. Uh, so yes, it's just the the, the answer: uh, moral enhancement, but uh, with practical goals, and and short terms maybe short terms goals. Yes, indeed, and this is a fascinating subject to consider. Of course, in the age of enlightenment, a lot of philosophers believed that through the application of systematic rationality, humans could be enhanced morally. They didn't yet conceive of pharmaceutical interventions to do that or implants to do that. They thought they could do that just through reason and redesigning society and the institutions of society. And to some extent, it worked. Uh, Steven Pinker documents some significant improvements in his book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, with regard to, uh, for instance, the rates of violence in various societies or perceptions of slavery uh, or uh, perceptions of uh, various forms of institutionalized inequality, uh, like uh, oppression of women and minorities was considered routine and part of the natural order for much of uh, human history. And yet after the Age of Enlightenment, and I would say because of the ideas of the Age of Enlightenment, this concept of universal human rights, universal human dignity uh, became well established. And so everywhere in the world now, uh, a person would be ashamed to advocate for this kind of oppression. And uh, people at least have to say that they're in favor of universal human rights. Even uh, dictators uh, like uh, Kim Jong-un uh, still have to uh, pay lip service uh, to the idea of being democratic. It's the Democratic uh, People's Republic of Korea that uh, he is the president of. Uh, so this does uh, display a certain shift in terms of moral values. And yet, of course, there are still some uh, grievous flaws that we see in human behavior and not just individual behavior, but the behaviors of crowds and collectives and systematic errors that occur in entire societies. And a thought that has occurred to me on numerous occasions, seeing the degeneration of the quality of public discourse uh, in many mainstream spheres over the past five years, is that it may be that this form of moral enhancement is coming up against certain hard boundaries set by human biology. And the next step would need to be some sort of uh, combination of biological and technological moral enhancement uh, that could help us overcome those kinds of boundaries as well. So uh, definitely a subject of conversation uh, that uh, we could speak uh, for many hours on, and uh, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to do that uh, over the coming months and years. But I think for now, uh, it would be a good occasion to begin with uh, some closing remarks from each of our panelists. And then as is our practice, we will have our guests uh, provide the last words. Uh, but for now, let's go to Art Ramon. Uh, Art Ramon, what are uh, some of your closing remarks regarding this conversation? Uh, just had a, a passing thought about BCIs. And so far, what Elon Musk has promised, at least what he said, is that the 
Neuralink, you'll be able to listen to music and it will provide mood enhancement. And so far, I'm not too impressed <laughs> with just those few revelations he's made. But, uh, but, uh, but thank you, uh, Jean and Mark, for, for coming and enlightening us. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And BCI, uh, by the way, for those who haven't heard the acronym, stands for Brain Computer Interface. Along these lines, Dan Elton, our Director of Scholarship, uh, has posted in the comments that direct brain-to-brain -brain communication uh, or telepathy could increase empathy and feelings of connection with geographically distant humans. Such tech will be enabled by BCIs, such as those being developed at Neuralink. So a uh, great connection with uh, Art Ramon's comments. And furthermore, uh, I would say uh, one has to start somewhere. So uh, you mentioned Elon Musk's uh, initial applications might not be particularly world changing, but uh, they're a start and perhaps a useful testing ground. I will also say increasing empathy through technology can be done through more recourse of uh, services like Zoom, uh, where we have the opportunity to connect with people uh, from around the world. I think the past few months have been a great opportunity for transnational and transcultural discussions uh, of a sort that would have been more difficult to have before. So uh, thank you for uh, bringing up that notion of increasing empathy, uh, Dan Elton. Now we will proceed. Uh, let's see if John Carrots is available to offer some closing comments. Yeah, I'm here. I just uh, wanted to say it was nice getting to hear the French uh, point of view today. And uh, one of my favorite places before uh, Christmas, of course, is the Ville de Noël in Paris by the Arc de Triomphe. It's very nice. But uh, I always like when you hear it mentioned earlier, was mentioned about how depending on the wording and how you described uh, transhumanism, some people thought it kind of went into the uh, the magic or the uh, uh, that kind of a realm. And I always think it's interesting because it always makes me think of the fact that when you think of science, you know, uh, what is our science of today is, is a lot of things that have been seen in the past as magic. And uh, so I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing when they view it that way, because we hope that the science that we're thinking about uh, is bringing us into a new age. And it can be things that at one time we thought of uh, as magic. So I think that might be actually a good thing that sometimes people have that point of view, although it might also hold us back. So I just thought that was interesting. Yes, indeed. It reminds me of Arthur Clarke's famous third law, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So thank you, John, for those remarks. Now let's go to Charlie. Yeah, I wanna thank uh, Mark and John both uh, for a great uh, discussion and uh, an enlightening one as well. Um, I, I will mention, um, we mentioned about overpopulation before. I think it needs to be, uh, remembered, and this is something that I find in agreement with transhumanists, posthumanists, singularitarians, let's not forget that we're all thinking about that idea of merging with technology, uh, which means, you know, the problem with overpopulation has always been about resources. Now, as we merge with technology, and we're talking about the um, neural implants, well, that neural implant can not only make us uh, smarter, but by being smarter, we should be able to attain higher levels of uh, empathy and compassion and, and thus better morality, not to mention the better communications. But as it continues, and as Ray Kurzweil predicts in his books, um, we will merge with technology more and more that we become more of a technological substrate more than a biological one. And as we become more of a cyborg or a robot or even mind uploading, the idea of overpopulation will be kind of moot. I mean, we won't even need the resources that we need as humans. So, you know, whether the discussions about the resources, whether there's enough food, well, we may not need it. We might be able to absorb energy right from, from the sun or something else, or uh, with regard to space. I mean, if you're, if you're a robot, you can be uh, any size or you can upload to a machine. So you could be a nanobot for that matter. So all those things go away once we get to a, a more further level 
in this in this trajectory that we're all talking about. And and based on Kurzweil, that's 25 years from now where the singularity is going to hit. So it's really possible that a lot of these things will happen long before we ever get to a, a problem with with overpopulation. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, now there is a slim chance. It's very slim that I may not win the presidency of the United States of America, and it's slim. But if I don't, and if Trump wins, uh, then I may I may want to I may want to take Mark up on on being you know that personality that could run for for for, for president in France. I'll be happy to go. <laughs> I'll be happy to go there, uh, you know, and see what I can do to to to, to maybe to be maybe win there. But anyway, um, just wanted to say thanks again for you guys coming on uh, to talk today. It was it was really great. Yes, indeed. Well, it'll be an interesting state of the world if in 2021, uh, Donald Trump is president of the United States and Charlie Cam is president of France. Uh, what uh, interesting geopolitical situations are going to occur as a result of this? Maybe we, we could turn France into transhumania if that happens. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> Indeed. Tony, you're welcome when, when you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know on November 4th. <laughs> it may actually make it may run longer right now. He's trying to shut down the postal system, so we'll see. We will uh, use uh, Zoom and such uh, stuff, and it will, won't be uh, no problem uh, to have your campaign in, in France uh, from uh, your home. Thank you. I would love to. I'll start practicing my French now. Actually, I won't have to. I'll I'll get an implant, uh, and I'll be able to speak French instantly. So that's not a problem. There, no, no. There, there's a company I mentioned it before. They're called Alter Ego. Check them out. They actually are developed. They in 2018 they came over that uh, where it's a sticker. You put it on, and you can you can hear the cloud, and you can translate. It's it's coming. So yeah, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna start you know practicing my French stuff. I'll be out there soon. Yes, okay. a universal translator uh, of the kind that uh, was available in Star Trek uh, would also do a lot for uh, the ability to improve empathy and communication across cultures. Uh, so now let us go to Pavel. Pavel, what are your concluding thoughts? Yeah, thank you. Well, first, uh, I want to restate what I said about immortality ward. I would use it to attract attention and ignite the uh, conversation. And during conversation, I would be more rational and explain that what we actually want and what, what we actually mean. Um, second, I, I'm really glad that if T, as Jean mentioned, has a plan about universal rights of sentient beings, such as future AI, the subject is very close to my heart. And uh, thank you so much, Mark and Jean, to show up and en enlighten us. And I'm looking forward to more broader and deeper collaboration between USTP and AFT and other uh, European and non-European transhumanist organizations. Thank you. We, we thank you again uh, for the for the occasion. Uh, I really thinking about uh, the different uh, things uh, we can propose to share. And you know that uh, Leonid uh, is working uh, on this. And uh, we were also talking about a specific uh, project. Uh, if it was there, it's probably he, he had talked to us uh, more specifically about uh, the, the the ideas uh, our little team uh, had in this uh, direction and uh, um, I it, it will be uh, probably really interesting not only for for France and United States but for every organization uh, uh, in uh, in the world or uh, at this where we have a, a transhumanist uh, organization a little uh, parenthesis uh, I am actually uh, in contact, at least after uh, more than 10 years living in Greece, I am actually uh, in contact with a small team of Greek uh, transhumanists, and uh, uh, they are talking about uh, have their first uh, event uh, and uh, 
uh, their first organization, but uh, they are starting from just zero. And uh, uh, such a, a little group uh, absolutely need tools. And I think that uh, we are able uh, to propose them uh, uh, some tools, some experience uh, that can help them uh, to go uh, faster than us and uh, not uh, losing a, a, a decade, uh, for our example, uh, to, to reach the, the level we are, uh, but uh, in their country uh, to, to go really faster. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid that uh, for the while the, the, the transhumanist community wasn't exactly able to uh, propose that kind of, of tools uh, to the, the other organizations. Uh, I remember well that uh, in 2017, when we organized uh, with Didier in Brussels, the uh, Transvision, it was one of uh, our ideas. Uh, but uh, at the end, you remember, uh, uh, Gennady, you, you sent us uh, a presentation of uh, the, the US Transhumanist Party at the, at the moment. Uh, but uh, even we, we had a different uh, workshop uh, on different uh, uh, issues, uh, and the idea was to be practical, uh, but an, an unfortunately, at the end, uh, almost nothing uh, uh, went off uh, this uh, discussion, only papers, and the, the, the papers were was lost. Um, and uh, I think it's a pity, I, and I think that uh, uh, maybe with uh, this momentum, I, uh, we have a new opportunity to, to try to, to build those uh, tools and to share them. And uh, so, uh, yes, I take the, the, the remark of uh, Pavel to uh, uh, remind that uh, we, we have this kind of, uh, pro of project and we have to, to work on it. Yes, indeed. And the U.S. Transhumanist Party uh, of course, invites uh, this kind of collaboration. I think we have uh, an infrastructure now to facilitate it, which is far superior to what existed three years ago. I'm even thinking of the depth of this interaction as compared to the video presentation that I sent you uh, for Transvision 2017, because there was only uh, so much that could be done from a technical perspective to present virtually. Uh, so I fit in the information that I could in a 10 minute presentation, but imagine in future conferences having this kind of interactive format as well with participants uh, potentially from anywhere around the world. Uh, and I will also say uh, the US Transhumanist Party is open to membership from all over the world and uh, we do invite you to join. We invite everyone from AFT Technoprog to join. Uh, it is absolutely free. So uh, no worries from a monetary perspective. And I just posted the link within the chat as well, transhumanist-party.org slash membership. And hopefully uh, with that kind of uh, infrastructure, we can also uh, hold more formal deliberations about issues that will ultimately be reflected in the U.S. Transhumanist Party platform. But in our platform votes, we've always invited our international members to join in and contribute. DDA, for instance, has contributed some ideas and comments in the past as well. So, uh, that would be a, a great way to pursue further collaboration also. Now, uh, Jean, do you have uh, concluding thoughts for this discussion? Yes, I have two remarks. First one is I am member of the US party, Transhumanism US party, I am member of, of this party. And uh, the second point is, uh, when we, we could have this type of exchanges on a periodical basis, like uh, once uh, every quarter or once every uh, semester, I don't know, but I think it would be good uh, to close this meeting with a, a tentative date 
uh, after Didier uh, pre presentation on the 23rd, but to try to find a, 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 next, uh, a next date for having these type of exchanges. That's it. Yes, uh, yes, I think it's a good idea. And we hold these virtual enlightenment salons on a weekly basis, uh, every Sunday, uh, which is 1 p.m. Pacific time. Now we do have a time difference here. Uh, so uh, right now it is a uh, nine hour time difference. Uh, so that, that's a fairly late start in France, uh, but it depends on uh, if you could accommodate that. Uh, really anything past this month is open uh, for us uh, right now in terms of the weekly virtual enlightenment salon. So if uh, either of you would like to participate, bring in some of your other members, we could set up uh, specific topics or subtopics of conversation uh, as well. Uh, I will leave it open to you, uh, even if you want to have something uh, for one of the salons in September, uh, we could arrange that. Uh, Jenedy, if I can, uh, yes, uh, I have an, an, another um, ideas or remark on this point. Um, I don't know uh, if uh, Jean was uh, just uh, talking about the 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 way that the the, the silence by U.S. Transmanis Party, the Enlightenment silence uh, uh, works, or uh, to speak with the the French uh, organization, or to speak uh, in, uh, in general with transhumanist organizations and uh, on the specific uh, um, organi organizational topics. Uh, that is what <laughs> Leonid was trying to, to do uh, with uh, the, the people he, he contacts uh, on uh, Discord. Um, you know that uh, he, he was in, in, and is still in contact uh, with uh, people from Russia, specifically a uh, different person from, from Russia and from uh, Belarus. Uh, from uh, uh, Romania, uh, well, I don't know if it's uh, just because he himself is uh, uh, he speaks Russian, and so uh, naturally, in a way, uh, the, he he had more contacts uh, with uh, uh, peoples from Eastern uh, Europe. Uh, but anyway, uh, David Wood is, uh, for example, in the, on this uh, Discord, and and Pavel uh, uh, came in uh, more recently, and and yourself if I remember well. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the, the important point, it's not the, the tool, uh, I think. Uh, I think it's the, 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 the goal. So um, do you think it's, uh, uh, it, it could be interesting for the US Transient Minds Party uh, to, uh, to use I believe we lost you, Mark. Oh, ah, you're back. Uh, just as you were asking your question, we lost your connection. Uh, so if you could repeat that, I would appreciate it. Do Do you think it's it could be interesting for a U.S. Transhumanist Party to uh, give access to the the tools you you know well to use, for example, the salons, uh, to help the different organization at a well level? Uh, to share information, share experiences, and try to be uh, constructive together. Yes, I, I think it's a worthwhile discussion to have with regard to uh, how we've been able to develop this format for the virtual enlightenment salons, what technologies we use, what logistical uh, techniques and insights we've learned. Uh, so. Of course, we have a lot of great assistance behind the scenes. Pavel is doing the live streaming right now uh, using uh, OBS, uh, Open Broadcasting Software, and David Shoemaker made this Zoom meeting available, so I'd like to thank them for doing that. And uh, that is a, a conversation we could have as well, uh, possibly a technical meeting that won't be live streamed, but would be more of a training session 
of sorts. And I would say the three of us, uh, Pavel, David, and myself, would be the people to host this kind of session so that we can cover the technical uh, perspective as well as some of the insights uh, that we have learned from hosting these events. So. Yes, I'm more than happy to participate and share the, uh, any experience and knowledge I have. And yeah, I will be happy to be part of the more project oriented meetings. Excellent, excellent. So now, um, Mark, if you have any uh, final thoughts to conclude our conversation today regarding anything that's been said, uh, please proceed. Well, uh, I think that uh, you, we, 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 we say we, we, a, a, a lot um, and uh, it, it showed for me to, to think, um, um, first, first of all, that uh, yes, uh, maybe we have uh, nowadays uh, uh, this opportunity uh, to, to better share uh, our experiences. We are just experienced it uh, 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 now. And uh, I think it's uh, really, really, really positive. Uh, I really think so, what I think that uh, uh, other organization can have the, 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 the opportunity uh, you give us uh, today. Uh, I really invite you to do the same with uh, the, I don't know, the, the uh, um, uh, Italian uh, uh, Transhumanist uh, Association, uh, the, the Spanish, uh, etc. Um, and uh, yes, we, we, we will have the, the opportunity to hear uh, each of these uh, experiences. And uh, the, the other point is that, um, well, probably uh, United States are still some steps uh, uh, in front of uh, uh, those uh, different uh, European, for example, uh, countries. I, I'm not uh, able to to say. Um, I, I I will uh, re, I will be really interested uh, um, um, hearing much more about the the Russian experience. Uh, I don't know, for example, uh, how are the level of uh, uh, exchanges between the the, the American uh, movement and the Russian movement. I have some ideas because I had the occasion to encounter Danila Medvedev, for example, uh, and uh, others. Uh, so uh, I have a, li a little ideas, but um, I have the impression that uh, uh, the, the, re the, the relations and the contacts could be uh, much more um, effective and um, you, you can have more often a discussion uh, between us and, and, all, and all together. Um, uh, but uh, for the way, it's quite clear that uh, from France, we have the, the tendencies, the tradition, I don't know, it's the history is like that, uh, to, to uh, look, uh, um, um, first of all, uh, uh, toward the West. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, we, we will uh, uh, follow Charlie and all the, the, the party very closely in the, in the coming month and uh, uh, waiting to, to still learn about you uh, for the, the next step. Thank you very yeah. much for all that. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Jean, for attending, for sharing your insights with us today. Uh, we have learned a lot about the history and the work of AFT Technoprog, as well as about the political evolution of various ideas within France, the reception of transhumanism in France and promising opportunities for future collaboration. And we've discussed quite a few fascinating subjects along the way. This is what these virtual enlightenment salons are intended to cultivate. And I certainly hope that they will trigger the same kind of progress in the realms of technology and society, enhancement of our longevity, as well as moral enhancement that the 18th century Age of Enlightenment produced. So thank you very much to Mark and to Jean. Thank you to everyone who attended the salon, who partook in the chat. 
And now, live long and prosper. <laughs>